Uh, welcome. This is um, the third story being run through January for the Cyberpunk Dark Skies 2077 story here. We've got um, All Eyes on You. And uh, as last time, I'm going to go ahead and read our prologue bit, and we'll move into the story smoothly. 24 October 2077, NCPD Precinct Number 11, Corporate Plaza. Gino sat at a soulless desk, looking at data pads and screen sheets splayed out all over his already messy workspace. Bucko Slice Coffee was hotter than the sun and was steaming like a little smokestack over there on the side. Whole damn desk was like Night City, a clusterfuck of shit powered by poison. Gino missed his direct work with Regina. He missed the organization N54 brought on. Not one day on the job with Hogwatch did Gino ever feel like he didn't know what he was doing. Now, he's got a dozen murderers from just yesterday sitting in isolation cells underground, half a dozen more in Vista Del Rey. Could be all of them. Some of them, or none of them, did what NCPD patrol said they did. Welcome back, Mr. Hollywood, said Joey Bag of Donuts, slamming a new case file on his desk. Welcome back to the filth with us pigs, the cop laughed, muttering something like fucking asshole as he walked away. Gino could have ripped the fucking donut sucker in half with his bare hands. He'd tango with the nastiest cyber psychos Night City had to offer. And he didn't kill him. He caught him. Gino slid the new tablet so uh, he could take a look. Perp named Salvador Diego went by El Mano on the streets. Gino knew the guy. He was a boxer and did MMA around Watson. Uh, he watched him knock the block off some chromed out tiger claw one time. The victim... Gino's eyes went wide. He immediately got his agent out and started dialing. Compeki Plaza, Arasaka Waterfront. Cam stared down at the gaudy circular area rug at the foot of the bed. Blood splatters were all over the room, coating the walls and ceiling, massive window overlooking Little China and the north side of downtown. Body was on the floor near the small display cabinet in the corner. His head was inside. Eddie's Gam pulled up Ryan Ono, front man of the Sunday News Report for M54. Cam's body was covered in goosebumps under his armor jack as the scan finished. Window was broken out from the inside, meaning the attacker was already in the room. Based on Orion's state of dress, he was likely in bed, um, or, uh, yeah, front desk security confirmed the attack happened around 2 p.m. Arasaka security sent drones and operators up to the room shortly after the weapon scanners detected the retort of a rifle. They then saw the killer escape out the window. NCPD, at the insistence of Arasaka, picked up a fleeing man running south down Cartwright. Cam would pull his NCPD strings to get access to the suspect. Cam's agent buzzed. Gino, think of the devil. Hey, man, I was about to call you, Cam answered. Gino said, Orion's dead. He's dead. I got his splat sheet here on my... Cam cut him off. Yeah, I know. I'm here at the crime scene. Gino let out a gas and said, Oh, no. Cam left. Yeah, that's right, you gonk. Orion, oh, no. <laughs> they riffed about the wordplay for what seemed like a solid few minutes before they exchanged notes on the situation. Cam did some more legwork on the scene, uh, running his BD recorder, uh, but knew there was a fight between Arasaka and NCPD on who gets to take the body. Cam figured he'd get him to a meat doctor he could trust. Ripper Doc, Arroyo. Buckhead had been sitting in the waiting room for a little while. Rain was still fresh in his hair. Finally, Buzzard came out and nodded. You are Letty's friend, yeah? I'm sorry about the woman you were trying to help. Bucket shrugged and said, It's Night City. Folks die. Not why I'm here anyway, Doc. Buzzard's head tilted to the side with curiosity. Oh, yeah? Bucket stood up. Got a business proposition for you. You may not be the best ripper I've seen, but you're the only one I've got real connections to. Really got connections to. Not a lot of money in repairing cars, as most of the market in Haywood is cornered already. But I know a bit about cyberware. Buzzard nodded. As do I. Bucket wasn't expecting that, but kept going with his pitch. Sure, but I can soup up some of the chrome you are pushing. Make it nice and shiny so you can, or, so you can charge top dollar. 
Uh, we can help all the little mercs your exec and fixer friends are hiring on, make easy eddies fixing them up when they inevitably need repairs and upgrades. Buzzard crossed his arms and put a hand on his bearded chin. Before any agreements were made, a couple of people came through the door with a bloody duffel bag and tossed it on the ground. You buzzard, Cam said. Ja, I need help with an autopsy and some crime scene investigation. You up for some eddies? Of course. Gino looked over at Bucket. Who's this guy? Buzzard looked at Bucket, saying, for now, my partner. And that's where we'll begin the scene. Um, Gino and Cam, um, Gino, you met um, Cam outside of uh, Kompeki Plaza, probably on your way to um, Buzzard Shop. So this is Buzzard Shop here. Um, and uh, did you speak? I did, yeah. Did it go or no? I didn't see it. How about now? No, I didn't. Cool. So Buzzard's over. Um, he's actually not in Vista del Rey. He's on the other side of the water. I believe the area he's in is called Arroyo. Um, and uh, yeah, small little shop right on the water. Uh, used to be surrounded by pirates, not so much anymore. Um, when you had Cam, or met with Cam, Cam was um, driving in the van. So you kind of met outside of Buzzard's place, got together. Uh, Cam had a couple of duffel bags. Um, from the notes that I passed out to you, uh, Zach, is there anything that you would have taken in addition to the presumed Araya Ono? Orion Ono. Uh, if I would have taken definitely the laptop, laptop, um, all of the folders with the documents and the attache from the table, um, that data shard carrying case, I probably would have taken as well. Okay. Um, and everything else is still, oh, I guess, could we run, I, I could have Gino run forensics on the beverage cups, probably. You can pull them. Yeah. Yeah, I'll pull them too. See anything if they've else? got prints or anything. Uh, and out of character, if anybody saw something that he might want to have and you want to notate it out of character, feel free to do so. I don't mind out of character assistance. Been in there yet, yeah, right? You haven't been in there yet, Gino, and probably won't be able to get access. Arasaka runs security there, so uh, Cam was only allowed in because it was an N54 person who uh, oh, yeah, right. was dead. What am I doing? I've been sitting here this whole time without shades on. Okay, sorry, I'm not giving you the full cyberpunk earlier. experience. <laughs> I'm not giving you the full cyberpunk experience. I apologize. That's just scandalous of me. There we go. Now we can play <laughs> Apologies. Yeah, I definitely want all of the documents, too, that were found in the room, like the the folder under the laptop. The What about Clue Force? Just... Um, I, unless someone else here is... If Cam wouldn't do it, Cam wouldn't do it. No, I don't think Cam would take any of the clothing or the blanket. He has recordings of it all on the brain scanner and would probably use them, like, document them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would probably take the duffel bag, but yeah. not the clothing or the blanket or any of that stuff. Understandable. So two duffel bags uh, would have been what you were carrying, one of them filled with an Orion. Oh, no. Uh, folded up as neatly as possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what you're bringing in. The, um, that's what you're uh, putting to uh, Buzzard for the work. For so, sure. real quick, we're going to go through character introductions and I'm going to post some pictures. Um, this first bit is going to be segmented. Um, so, basically, uh, Gino, you are kind of like, you know, you've taken the, uh, taken the task, it is your job. Um, so, since you're kind of the lead in the law to, uh, side of things, it will probably be kind of the official lead in that regard not so much the actual lead because again the uh, n54 is kind of in charge we're going to start with you what does gino look like and um you know tell us what you look like specifically in this uh setting pulled up out in front of buzzard space walking in doing that uh pretty much close to what he looks like in his uh you know his character art uh minus the hogwatch decals 
Because we probably would have ripped those off. Ripped those off. Yeah. Yeah, you can or keep them. Pam's okay, we'll keeping keep his. You keep yours if you want to or not. But that's uh, I'll, I'll keep Pam own. keeps his sure on. We, we and about and that, a note but... for you too. Like obviously your character is kind of dressed as a cop to look as cop as possible while on the screen. You're now a detective. Whether you continue and maintain that presence is up to you. Detectives are also allowed a little bit more freedom in what they're allowed to wear. Maybe put, maybe put an overcoat on them, but you know. Yeah, give them a, a trench coat. Give them a trench coat. A duster. A that's, duster. That's detective. That's detective shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, Italian male, um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you can Fair enough. picture there with that. Yeah, it's pretty good at describing stuff. And then Cam, you're also yeah. on the scene. Go ahead and give us a bit about your character, how he looks, um, moving in. So Cam is fairly well built. He's young and athletic. Um, he looks just like the picture you see. He's usually got bright colors on, flashing the N54 logo all over his clothes. Uh, drives a giant pink and blue van. Um, that's got the N54 and Hogwatch logos on it. Yep. Um, he also has very visible cyberware. Um, an optical mount. So there's the two cyber eye. Well, one cyber eye, one human eye, and then five other cyber eyes mounted to the optical mounts on the side of his head uh, as well as a uh, cyber arm and that's very noticeable and he's usually got a duffel bag full of camera equipment, recording equipment transmitters, tools he's the gear guy Unfortunately, between Chino instance, and Cam but unfortunately in this instance he has a duffel bag full of um Someone else's gear <laughs> and another duffel bag. His one bag has all of his co-workers' gear and the other duffel bag has all his, his uh, co-worker. co-worker. <laughs> uh, we love to see it. So yeah. you're obviously stepping inside and interrupting a scene um, as it is your place of business, Buzzard. Um, actually, we'll leave with Bucket since you are the host. So Bucket, you came in ready for business, ready to make some business. Uh, tell us a bit about your character, how he looks in uh, this current scene. Uh, yeah. Um, he seems a little uncomfortable in Buzzard's shop because the only other time he's been there, he lost someone who he really wanted to get information from. Uh, so he's a little nervous seeing a bunch more people come in that he doesn't really know. Uh, but he does look geared out like he does in his picture. Uh, still uncomfortable with that giant shotgun on his shoulder. He's more <laughs> of a handgun guy, but that's still a sentiment from his last interaction with Buzzard. Uh, so overall, he's he's very well put together, clean cut as much as you can be while being a mechanic, but he looks nervous in this situation. Um, quick note, too. Um, do you think that... Um, I mean, you work in a shop, you know, there's got to be distractions, like, you know, you got the radio going or watching TV over there in the corner. Do you think you're kind of a TV watcher? Uh, music. You jams don't really out. Watch TV? No, not not really. It tries to keep that stuff off because okay. it's um, think well, of it as like bad juju if you keep watching the death lottery every day. Fair enough. I I, I will say um, you probably there's still a possibility of you just kind of knowing them from just the background oh, noise. Yeah, I would know who Hogwatch is because I remember talking yeah. to Guinea and getting to meet him and getting to see his group and everything and learning about the exploits of like Hogwatch as a team. Perfect. So yeah, you know that these two obviously are celebrities um or yeah but you know their show's canceled too everybody knows it because it was on for a year that's it that's all there's you still get. reruns there's still reruns we're still getting you know yeah sure if we can make money off of it that shit's syndicated you <laughs> know yeah, if we can make money off of it we're, of course we're, put, we're putting on the streaming services you know we're not paying anybody right. who worked on it. it it runs on n54 3 but like <laughs> right <laughs> It's a couple views a month. That's what we need. That's it. That's, it. That's all. Um, ad revenue is ad revenue, bitch. People pay for the service and they just forget they even did it. And then, like, you know, you got them. You got them by the balls. That's it. Um, and then, last but not least, um, the uh, proprietor of the shop we are currently standing in. Um, Steve, go ahead and describe Buzzard for us. Uh, Buzzard's an older gentleman. Um, pretty wiry, his scrubs and lab coat kind of hang off of his bones a bit, but um, he still kind of stands with a straight back and carries himself 
with the kind of the confidence that a man, like an older gentleman who's had to live in this world for this long would carry, kind of lives by the phrase like, uh, beware the old man in a world where men, people die young kind of thing. Um, his cyberware is very function over style. Like it doesn't seem like he tries to keep up with current trends. Like he still wears his old smart goggles or smart glasses. Like um, it's very kind of almost like retro, but um, in general, he's pretty uh, like friendly, um, kind of more business oriented and um, always kind of gives people a chance. He's very, um, he's not like shoot first kind of person. Um, is very open-minded to like business propositions or any sort of deals and seems quite content with um, kind of the lifestyle he's built. Perfect. And obviously, those of you who are watching at home, you, you will note that one of the players is currently not involved in the process but was mentioned poignantly. So we're going to get to that. So Gino, you come... You had a conversation outside with Cam, okay, before you go inside and basically get the measure. Now, Cam, if you pass off the raw BD to Gino or a copy of it, he has that for his own kind of referencing. Um, and whether or not Gino wishes to remain here for the body scrub or not is up to him. You do have other pressing matters regarding the investigation, um, mm -hmm. regarding the individual you have um, in lockup who is the main suspect well I would love oh, to interview so yeah, yeah, we can, uh, we we'll can have a conversation with you uh, with the uh, hey, hey. best friend eh? so do you want to just toss the body and leave it with buzzard or do you want to like uh, stick with it um, cam and like hmm. get it cam's like... too stupid to not dump the body and walk away I think trusting buzzard wholeheartedly it's up to Gino to be smart enough to stop him or not. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. I don't but think like, Gino's smart enough. I don't. <laughs> that's what I, I think. Cam and Gino are just like, hey, we got this body. Oh, we got sorry, some eddies. Sorry. You want to fucking cut this thing up? Give me a ring uh, when you gotta figure it out, huh? We gotta go talk to a fucking mask guy. So. You got you got this guy here. He's got a fucking assistant. What the fuck you need me and Gino for, huh? Um. Buzzard, I guess <laughs> yeah. th that's very vague, and obviously a doctor is not going to leave it there. But as you've opened the duffel bag, which is a heavier duty kind of like military pack kind of deal, right? Cam carries all of the gear in there, dumped it all out, carried it in hand, and put the body in. Um, but when you pull the body out, you will note it's pretty beaten and bruised, um, like broken bones and cyberware inside. And the head has been completely removed by blunt force trauma. Like, it has been severed by something kind of more sturdy than a blade. Um, just by sheer force of power and will. So you... Did they bring the head? As the head his is there, eyes yeah. hit the head, Cam will notice that and be like, Oh yeah, that was, I think, a fucking door, huh? Nasty shit. But, like, can you get the fucking pieces out? Like... I'm pretty sure that's what fucking killed him, you know? You don't have a head, but, like, he's got little pieces we might be able to stick out, salvage, get out. Any information, any fucking fingerprints, you got recordings, I don't fucking know. Yeah, an astute observation there. Um, <laughs> let's get him on the table, and he just wants a full autopsy. Um, I think you know as how he died, so what, As much fucking information as you can get me, bud. You get me any fucking readouts on his last movements, you got any fucking, like, recordings of vitals from when this can be more specific, you give me any fucking information, I I'll pay you pretty good, huh? You want something up front? Is that what you fucking asking? Um... We trust. You come back. <laughs> We trust! Yeah! <laughs> Fuck yeah, buddy! Yeah. Let's go! We gotta go have a conversation! We- yeah, we trust! Yeah! So, Fuck yeah! I, uh, <laughs> I did- Fucking shit, huh? I did post it- uh, I did post something, uh, earlier in the, um, in-character notifications, and you'll see that image, because I know your TV is just outside in your lobby, so, like, as you two are heading out, you have already kind of 
put forward a blast to M54 to Harvey and let mm. him know the situation from where your investigatory process is. This allows them to put out that special bulletin, and this will be Jillian Jordan kind of notifying the world that um, Orion Ono has met with uh, Dire Fate. So, Buzzard, it's not, you're not like a, a, a detective or nothing, um, but, but you're a smart boy, and so it's not too hard for you to pick up that the bloody mess that's now seated on your um, Ripper Doc chair is Orion Ono, one of the front leads of the N54 News anchor team. Ooh. This could be, to find out who killed him could get a little prestige. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, Bucket's, he's like a tech, right? That's what yeah. saying. He's proficient with cyber. Um, I'll suggest that I'll work more on the flesh and bones if he wants to see if any cyberware can be salvaged. If we can maybe to t- see, is there any, is it, does cyber kind of record the last thing, like movements it made or things it did? Depends on the, uh, so cyberware specs, yeah, you can kind of determine like what it was doing, kind of, but not without like a neural link. The presumption yeah, like is... if you had an arm, I want to know if the arm was just flailing and struggling, or if it was trying to like grab, if it was trying to, yeah, like, what exactly, like how it went down. Did this guy just get clobbered, or was he fighting back? That'll require a neural link. So similar to like a car, right? You've got all of these pieces and bits working together. There's a computer that will basically run diagnostic, ugh, diagnostic on the shit that's happening with the rest of the car. Similarly, that's how a neural link kind of processes with a cyberware that's kind of connected to the body, um, and. Uh, We'll discuss more into like those bits as we kind of get into it. As a med tech with medicine, you, I believe, required to do a DV thirteen surgery check to rip the cyberware out. So what I'm going to say is, is you can go ahead and make that one check for all of the cyberware on this guy to get every bit out. So we don't have to roll over and over again, and I don't have to list every single item. Because that's just mm-hmm. a headache, and I don't want to do that paperwork. On a on a dead body, do you really need to do the surgery roll? Uh, yeah. So that... the reason why it's the case is so cyberware isn't just like in there and it's not connected to tissue, right? It's yeah. connected to the the flesh so that it okay. functions correctly. If you just sense. get in there and just grab it and rip it out, and you're not trained like uh, Buzzard is, you're gonna fray wires. You're gonna make the cyberware basically obsolete immediately um so it's that's why it's a very med tech specific thing it's the connections and um and how it's kind of loaded into the body um are what make it work but just ripping those out are what's going to make it not work okay no you said surgery right yeah surgery dv13 if you want to spend luck on it you do not have a rocker boy you'll need to spend don't fucking need it <laughs> all right just no, my, my surgery is 12 so there, i don't think i could have failed yeah it was a very mm-hmm. low chance um okay great <laughs> so then if gino and cam basically s- drop off the body and then leave um you two kind of look at each other you say i'll rip it out you take a look at it afterwards um, so you're kind of working as a team already. We love to see it. Um, you start cutting it out, handing over the cyberware very gently to Bucket, who's like, you know, comes over, does like a, like an air can spray to like get all of the, you know, materia of body meat off of it very cleanly, then inspects it, hooks it up to his tech scanner, checks it, um, and is basically getting you the information that you want. And uh, we'll get into that um, after a fashion. Um Cam, Gino, driving back to Precinct 11. Um, anything you want to say along the ride there? I'm my own squad car now. Oh, yeah. I guess are we taking your car or my car? Shit. Should we, uh, are we going separate? <laughs> Do we each drive our own vehicles separately, one behind the other, like assholes? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That's us. We are those people. Definitely. Absolutely communicating on radio the whole time. So, yep. two of you go ahead and make a drive roll. <laughs> What's that under? Uh, uh, control. Control, yeah. Yeah, control. Drive land vehicle. Wow. All right. All right. You guys are good at it. Um, so you manage to kind of drive up um, very quickly and head straight towards Corpo Plaza, right down the heart of it. Um, 
and you're able to get onto this uh, turnpike without issue. It's kind of a clusterfuck of roads right around Buzzer's location due to just like the mega building nearby, yeah. this fucking factory. It's just a mess. It's a hot mess of yeah. just roads on top of roads on top of roads. So you get up onto that turnpike, you just drive straight in. It takes you no more than like 20 minutes to get into uh, Corpo Center. And um, you lead Gino because uh, obviously N54 doesn't have clearance. You pull up to the uh, the, the door guard, uh, the uh, toll booth <laughs> Willie of the guy, um, and uh, you oh, Willie. are allowed. Is that like Steamboat <laughs> Willie's cousin? Yeah, which is we can do that now. It's totally public legal. domain, baby. I was about to say it's public yeah. domain now. <laughs> they allow you. Oh, into we the... need to work him into cyberpunk. We got to figure it out. <laughs> Um, they had some, I don't want to get into the creepy cartoons in the farmhouse. No, 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 no. So you managed to go down into the parking lot, um, of the, uh, precinct and then head up to, um, your department. Um, and, uh, a lot of people are kind of giving you distance, especially Joey, uh, because what the fuck, your show's canceled. What are you doing walking around with, uh, him again? So they don't know what's going on and they just kind of keep their distance so they don't get in trouble. But uh, you go, you grab your data slab, you hand the information over to um, to Cam, and um, if you want to go and uh, set up an interrogation room, all you have to do is ask. No, definitely not. And on the way, I would have glared at Bag of Donuts. You would have what? Glared? I would have glared at, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, he takes the message, and um, yeah, if you do get an interrogation room. Um, yeah, we'll set that up. Okay. So, um Sitting in the interrogation room, having been led in there by uh, two um, officers, um, and uh, you would be chained to the table, um, El Mano, but the uh, shackles that are binding you have been basically double locked. So since your wrists are quite larger than a normal individual's, they've basically taken two shackles and connected them, like one to another, to lock around your wrists. Um, and they've also put, um, an EMP switch in the chair or underneath the chair you're sitting in. So if you kind of shift move or do anything, an EMP burst will hit and knock out your cyberware. Better safe than sorry. It's the, uh, old NCPD adage, I guess. Um, but, um, you're sitting there waiting and in walk two guys you recognize from Hogwarts, from TV. <laughs> <laughs> um... But, uh, Magpie, go ahead and describe um, El Mano. All right. So, this guy here, um, big dude, big dude, like 7'2", all muscle, um, like, takes up an awkward amount of space in a, in a room, um, generally, and, like, looks like he's aware of it. So, like, he'll be kind of, like, really tentative about how he moves most of the time um always wears that mask uh definitely has like a preference for bright colors um so like he'll wear like pinks and blues and then his mask is like green and orange and he has um these orange water wing things going on <laughs> um he'll just say they're for accessorizing but um they're inflation yeah. devices. Yeah. They're yeah, they're literal water wings. So like basically so <laughs> He can't swim. You know, yeah, he can't swim. He he can doggy pedal, so. Um that's about it. Um he has what is the chest thing called again? So you have a berserk unit. Um it yes. is a type of speed. Berserk wear. unit. Yeah. yeah. Um doesn't really typically carry a whole lot of weapons. I think he has a handgun. That's been checkers. removed from you. <laughs> oh, then just kid. I don't you have in any jail, weapons. baby. I am a weapon. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are a weapon, but they have the they have the kill switch underneath your seat. So yeah. Okay. The, so in your processing, I will say at one point they did remove the mask, which obviously caused a bit of a a, a kerfuffle. Yeah. But they had to take your picture for lockup, and they took your picture twice, once with the mask, once without. <laughs> so you had to take the picture, then take the picture again. Oh. 
under the mask, so you know, no, like in. We in, don't need to know. We didn't see it. Okay. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't see it. That was off screen. This, that's a, that's you don't see it. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter. It's on now. Is the important part. So um, yeah, like so he's sitting in a chair, right? Yeah. So you're sitting in like a steel okay, so, chair, and your hands okay, are kind but, of on the table, steel table. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. So like an interrogation room. Yeah. Like, okay. But, like, imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger in Kindergarten Cop, like, sitting on the little kitty chair. Yeah. Like, that's basically him right now. And he's just, like, <laughs> and yeah, just kind of chilling and just waiting for something to happen. Gino, it does not take a smart man to know that the shackles there are absolutely not a deterrent. Um, like, They're just decorative. You're pretty sure he could just do a... Because they had to get them around the wrist, they had to use two shackles, like a double bind, and so yeah. Can we see him on like a camera or through a mirror, like before one way you go in. Before we go in, yeah, yes. that's I imagine like what we Absolutely. we're cops, well, like we're you, gonna do the so, shitty okay. cop thing and look at the perp and like talk shit about him before 100%. we go talk so, to him. <laughs> literally, you're like watching him and he's just like looking at the ceiling like inspecting any water stains or like cracks yeah. and just like off in his own little world yeah little so in that room the drop ceiling oh yeah. it's not yeah. no no we're in corpo plaza it's nice in here so they're all yeah. it's the he, nicest okay. police station you've ever seen yeah so he's very impressed he's just like oh this is that's where they really put all nice drywall this is where they put all the uh, this is where they put all the uh, nine one one call money. So if you don't understand that joke, let me explain the dystopian future that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you call nine one one, it's not free. They charge you eddies <laughs> per minute <laughs> while you're on with them, <laughs> and they're helping oh you God. with your problem. So yeah. Anyway, you're you're at the mirror. You're looking at him. You're the. The two-way mirror. Well, actually, I presume it's not a two-way mirror since we're in the fancy. It's actually crystal dome technology, so it can go either way. It can be turned on, the camera view. You know what crystal dome is? Yeah. yeah. It's basically like a view cars. screen that shows the opposite side. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a big boy, huh? It's a big motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> What's with the fucking mask? It's a luchador here. <laughs> he looks like he's gonna grab you and fuck your ass up if he gets a hold of you. If that happens, he's gonna have a mouth full of rocket, I'll tell you that. Right? That motherfucker could have shoved someone's head off with a door. Absolutely. Like, oh shit, wait a minute, actually. This he checks big his, ass he motherfucker. He probably could have done it with sure a pinky. Yep. Yeah. God damn. You can't I... take loaded weapons into the interrogation room, though. Yeah, it's my arm, though. Oh, yeah, you can take loaded weapons. <laughs> it's it's my, my arm! arm. <laughs> similar, similar, similar to how the perp has loaded weapons in the yeah. gun zone. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't really translate without, like, <laughs> in the void. Uh, oh, <laughs> anyway, God. anyway. Uh, so how so how are we doing mean? this? We doing this? We do bad cop, funny cop? What are we doing? Funny cop, funny cop. Funny cop, funny cop, let's do it. I, as I you, bet that'll work on this motherfucker. As you decide your uh, interrogation technique and move to the door to enter in, that scene cuts and we go back to the uh, cutting room. <laughs> so, you manage to pull out quite a bit of cyberware. The main problem that Bucket would immediately realize is that the disconnect, like where the head was removed, was right about lower neck level, and neural links typically seat inside like right on top of the rib cage so the neural link in question was a relatively newer one arasaka make it has been cleaved square in half and so looking at it it doesn't look like there's going to be much data you're going to be able to pull from it other than what was connected to it and when you look at the head excuse me it looked like there was something that was forcibly extracted from the side of his neck and head like, somebody grabbed onto a bit of it and yanked. So, like, his ear is basically deflated inwards, and, like, the side of his face is kind of, like, broken apart, as it looks like an internal agent and memory um, uh, shards, or memory, like, uh, uh, spacing, and also the chipware sockets were all just kind of pulled out of his neck with one tear. So those aren't present. The cyberware you do find... Um, bear with me here. Um, 
and it's been extracted so it is neat enough but it's all in poor condition the guy was muscled around quite a bit um even the internal stuff is kind of fucked up the cyborg question he has a um Neuralink's busted uh, surprisingly, his internal cyberdeck uh, survived the shit show. Uh, so there is an Arasaka Shadow cyberdeck. Uh, feel free to write this down. Um, it looks like the uh, speedware was broken, so it's a part of the top of the neural link that's no longer um, even noticeable. But the spec that you're able to pull from the remnant um, says that he had a Rostovic Kereznikov in him. Um, and he the piece that remains is, it looks like a defensive cop was also present in him, which is an add-on to a speedwear. Kind of goes slotted underneath the Neuralink and connects up over, like, on um, the spine to the Rostovic. Um, that is um, an, an add-on that's applied to another piece of speedwear. That's probably the most expensive bit you pull, the Rostovic defensive cop. Um... And it looks like he has both of his cyber eyes intact. Um, he has two basic Kiroshi optics, and both of them have micro video um, added. And yeah, his um, cyber audio suite is fucked. Um, I think that... Oh, no, he had one more bit. Um, this is another big one. Uh, trauma Team Blood Pump. Those are all on the Dark Skies sh uh, blurb. That's what you're able to pull Wait, out. Wait, he had which Trauma Team, sorry? A Trauma Team Blood Pump, which basically when your hit points are reduced to a certain amount, it auto-speed yeah. heals you. Probably doesn't help when you don't have a head. No, but... yeah, it the was... Pump look like it activated at some point like it's um, no. out of blood or it no. was never didn't activate uh, so could bucket or buzzard both me from the technical side kind of see that it was like even though he looks beat up by the time it came down to actually like killing him he got killed very quickly like yeah. it was almost instant yeah, yeah it looks like he might have got jumped like it wasn't a scuffle it was just he got grabbed and beheaded mm -hmm. In the words of Phil Swift, that's a lot of damage. It was very sudden, very quick, just lots of head damage, more so, more than he could survive. Um, and, uh, and you said it's a very, very clean cut, like almost like a laser cut? I wouldn't say clean. I, I say it was, it's a very... <laughs> well, didn't you say it's like the opposite? It's like yeah. blunt for... It was almost like... Oh, okay. It, like, I heard the neck air should all be so... like... Yeah, tenderized meat. Oh, like. <laughs> the okay. cyberware looks like it was cleanly shorn. Yeah, so it looks okay. like it was like you know, uh, 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 like a hydraulic press just landed on half of that thing, right? Okay. But the truth okay. of the matter is, is like the flesh looks like it kind of got like ripped. Mangled. <laughs> yeah, okay. like ripped by like a door. Yeah. So we're looking for a strong person, but someone who understands cyberware and where it'd be located, because. They clearly knew where to cut. Yeah. Or a team of people. Um, I guess since you said all this cyberware can't tell us much because the neural link's gone. So can we go old school and like do like a body autopsy, like look for any like foreign objects or remnants that like or things that shouldn't be there? Great question. Like leftovers. Yeah. So um, go ahead and give me. Uh... I'm trying to think of the name of the skill. I, I want to say it's investigation, but um, I am also dumb. Uh, let's go with awareness and... Okay, hold on. What is the one that does... Okay, I'm going to give you a couple options. Uh, that'll probably be better. So, um, conceal slash reveal object is a skill that allows you to find objects that have been kind of noticeably hidden intentionally. Um, so that is an option. Um, second option will be... Um, uh, wardrobe and style. 
because of his clothing and just uh, outfit and accoutrement. And then either paramedic or first aid for the um, actual kind of autopsy part. You'd want us both to roll that or just buzzard? So either of you can choose one of those skills. So either, both of you can choose one of those skills, only one. Um, if you choose the same one, then we're just going to have one person roll whoever's the highest. What do you want to do, buzzard? Uh, I think paramedic is the safe one for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I then will just shoot for, because my paramedics was probably my safest bet as well, but I'll do conceal reveal object. That one's not terrible. Okay. Throw them. DV is going to be 15 for the paramedic, and DV is going to be 13 for the concealed. Oh. Looks like you both got them. Solid successes. So for the conceal reveal object, you um, you're kind of going over everything, placing all of the uh, you know neat kind of um, stuff there, and you kind of have this moment where you kind of go, okay, no cyber legs, no cyber arms. We're looking at the body here. And you're thinking to yourself, like, yeah, but... So you kind of go over the body after Buzzard's kind of done his, um, you know, securing the rib cage and kind of getting ready to kind of really go through and look at the physical meat um, a bit more closely. And you kind of just start tapping the leg. Buzzard kind of looks over knowingly, like kind of going, ah, smart. And you find a subdermal pocket. You manage to pop it open, and inside there is a data shard. Oh, nice find, my friends. Very good. I got one myself, so I know where to look for him. The uh, paramedic roll, after you kind of like add the data shard to the neatly cleaned, you know, cyberware you've got laid out, um, you uh, go through the process. Blood force trauma. Um, you are expecting this with the anticipation of determining whether or not these were like raw just hits from a body or if they were like you know mechanical in nature from like a mech or a robot or something um, or somebody with like cyber arms um, you then also kind of think about like melee weaponry like big bludgeons or the like um, and yeah and sure enough you decide that uh, this individual was struck with a blunt object. He was not hit with a fist. Fist indentations, basically you're trying to strike with either these or these if you're stupid, uh, but these two knuckles when you punch, and so it kind of leaves a specific kind of indentation on a person. Cyberware included, like gorilla arms will leave the same kind of print, but there's nothing like that. In fact, it's almost like a flat and almost conical kind of hit on each of the strikes. Um, like, whatever was hitting him was, like, some kind of, uh, war hammer or something. Okay, good. And are, their first guess was that it was the the door of the cabinet they found the head, but... Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, the case. there was one blow that's definitely a door. <laughs> okay. But there are a lot of other blows that were something else that led him to that point. So Okay, so he got roughed up a bit. He got then... roughed up quite a bit. You don't even know if he was still alive when the head got taken off. Yeah. Um, actually, okay. with that 24, you do know. He was not alive when that head got taken off. He was dead before that. Okay. So someone came in, smoked him with, like, we'll just say a war hammer, like, really quickly, and he died pretty much instantly because his blood bag didn't go off, and then decapitated him with a cabinet door. Correct. Man. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, alter Honestly, alternatively, it, <laughs> it could have been a slower beating if the blood pump was hacked. Ooh, so but, we're we're that, definitely yeah, that looking might be at more. like a, a group. This doesn't seem like a one man job by any stretch. Like someone so brutal to do all of that, but also smart enough to get all the pieces out of them and not break anything too severely. It doesn't feel like that's the same person. Yep, yeah, they'd have to be really smart, strong, and fast to do all of that at once. Yeah. Hmm. Who could be all of those things? <laughs> Nobody. It's not possible. It's not a Tuesday. John chuckles. <laughs> you play an archetype. You play a... <laughs> you get one. <laughs> you pick one. You let the two not smarties yet. with the body. <laughs> the you get nuts. one or two halves. <laughs> <laughs> two West tops. <laughs> Perfection. Uh, so we're going to shift, move over to the other side, and... um. 
I don't know which one of you two notated the cyberware, but remember, you're obviously going to have to fight for what's on the table um, amongst yourselves. Oh, I, I thought the other thing was that we were going to... I was about to say, we split half. it. I was about to say, oh, I work yeah. on it. If he finds a person, he well, just tells I, me how much... I'm going to have to trust him because I don't, I'm not a ripper doc. I don't know what he charges. Yeah. So I'm not going to be there every time he works on someone. So it's, it's fully up to him what he gives if me. You're, if you're selling it. But I was going to say, if any of that like looks tasty for you to have installed, oh. that's another matter. So keep an <laughs> eye on what you just got. It's, it's yeah. not garbage. You, you um, notice I, I am, I am the blood bag. Like, damn, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, I do want to stress another cool. thing too. So operating systems typically can't be loaded two for one, but this guy had an Arasaka shadow and some sort of speedware that was broken in his body that should not normally work and what you have remnant of the neural link it's some sort of like new state of the art r soccer neural link that was broken in half okay so we're real sad that got broken that's what you're saying um yeah because if you'd had it you'd been able to run two operating systems yeah <laughs> but we're going to shift over back to the NCPD office. You enter in. You move to sit across from El Mano. Are they no. both gone? <laughs> Nothing. Until, they're, until either are back. Oh, I was like... <laughs> oh, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't know it's actually uh, uh, That's my bad. That's me? It's back to you. You step in to talk to El Mano. You still have to sit in the chair. You can if you want to. I will. Right. Cam stays like, standing uh, yeah, off to folder. by the door. I want to try and get a good capture of the whole room. Okay. All right. I'll slam the manila folder on the table. See, El Mano, huh? Or Salvador yeah. uh, Diego. Also well, that. So, uh, I'm going to start with what you think happened. In this uh, here uh, endeavor here, you know, with uh... yeah. Why do you think you? Uh, why do you think you here, huh? Uh, so let's hear your side of the story to start. Yeah. Why do you think you here, huh? Look, I didn't. I didn't mean. I mean. I didn't mean to. Okay. What didn't well... you mean to, huh? <laughs> I just. Before we start, actually, I don't care. Never mind. <laughs> Rights don't matter. Um, what, so what, your side of the story? <laughs> Look, I just got... I just came to fight, okay? And, uh... The, mm. Okay, who'd you come to fight? Well, no, who'd you come to fight? I mean, I've seen you on the circuit. You've done a good job, but... Uh, but you weren't in fight? no ring, huh? No. No. No, so, who are you fighting? Who are you fighting, big guy? Okay, well... Mom. I mean, there was a street fight. Yeah? Oh. And, uh... This guy from the Maelstroms... He, uh... Well, I got a... I got a punch off, and, uh... You, that, you know, that... I got a punch off. You punch a little too hard, big guy? A little bit. Yeah. Just a, sometimes just a bit. sometimes we hit a little harder than we think we're going to hit, huh, big guy? Yeah. Ooh, that's, uh, that's how it works sometimes. You put him down in that street fight? Huh? Hey, hey, I feel, yeah. I feel, yeah, hey, I done hey. some shit too. I ain't done that with my hey, hands, but I, too, like, shit's huh? going off, you know? So that's why you think you're here, because you punched some dude on the street? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I right, right, and then everyone started fighting, so I ran. Alright, right, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. You punch a dude down, you gotta fuck off. I hear you. Hey, so, you uh, just out of curiosity, you know who the fuck we are, huh? I mean, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You watch, you watch the TV, huh? You watch the TVs? Ah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, alright. So, you ain't no cyber psycho. No. But you know the host of the show, huh? Mm -hmm. You don't. No. Those are the, no, part, you those ain't, are the you ain't. parts. What? What you one of them you one of them pieces of shit that skips through the ads so we don't get no money? 
Maybe. God damn it. He, I can't do this. Oh, I can't. He walks out of the room and slams the door shut. I'm sorry, man. Sorry. Like, ten seconds later, it comes back in. Put him in for off. ten. I just had to cool off. I just Put him in cool for ten. Off. I nope. can't believe he didn't run the ads. Are you, are you good? Are you good? Put him away. Lock him. Continue now. Lock him up. Throw away the key. <laughs> All right. Well, he's just like let's... looking back and forth, just like. All right, okay, now, now I'm continue confused. Now. Why he's am I? <laughs> let's continue. Okay. So you punched a little too hard, huh? Yeah, the the guy's head came off. Okay. Um, like just right, you had just to do right some off. Sort of, is there, is there, what happened after that? I ran. Okay. Yeah, I, I ran. I ran down the what was the street? God damn it! So you ran I mean, down California, and then you turned yeah. left on Cartwright, and the cops pulled you. Uh, just to, yeah, does that it on you? Yeah, that, but hey, in my okay. voice. <laughs> so, to put uh, it in scope real quick, let's move to the Kompeki side uh, of the map. I should have just snap pinged. Why didn't it do it? Um, and we're going to zoom in on it. Now, it's kind of hard to see because, like I said, it's a clusterfuck of roads on top of roads, right? But you can see that there's this little nib that comes out of Kompeki Plaza and goes underneath those highways. The road that it connects to is California Avenue. California Avenue goes down south maybe a few blocks before it connects with Cartwright. And Cartwright is actually, you see these two right here? These two uh, thoroughfares that go up? Yeah. Cartwright goes in between them, and there's two overpasses that come out on top to those two roads. Well, one down, one up, right? But Cartwright is a street that goes right between them. Okay. So, yeah. if it, It's kind of a situation if you were really running from the law and you weren't dumb. Um, you wouldn't go there because it's kind of a bottleneck and it's kind of an easy spot to get picked up, right? You'd keep running down California because it would take you this way. And I you, mean, yeah, no, again, I'm, I'm saying for the cop, the cop would know this. Yes. If, if Almano was like <laughs> a, a cold blooded murderer inside of a fancy hotel with apparently undetectable rifles until they're shot, like, again, you have the, da the data, he wouldn't have fucked up this bad. Yeah, and I'll have that open on the, on the uh, desk and kind of just be tapping the desk and be like, hmm. So is it like a rhythm, else. though? They just... Is it like a rhythm, or you just like da da da? Yeah, yeah da -da -da. it's like a tap 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 tap. Okay. Tap tap. Okay, and then he'd be like, da -da 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 -da. like he'd like <laughs> syncopate the beat a little bit with his own fingers. <laughs> <laughs> just stop and be like, I'm not amused. Um, what well, was? All right, Kim. What do you, what do you um, mean? So you got picked up from the cops after that. This is this is all that happened yeah. that night. Well, I mean, a little too hard. There was a there was a guy. He ran real real fast. You see, oh. there's another guy run real real fast. Yeah. Yeah. Where that guy? He didn't pass me, and I was running as hard as I could. Ran past you. Yeah. Hmm. Going which way? Uh, California, right? Yeah, down California. Yeah, he ran. Car, he right? ran yeah. He, California. Not the right way, huh? Okay. <laughs> this motherfucker, you uh, you got a good look at him. Uh. You knew his name. He, he went. Did. He went real. He ran real fast, and he was he was wearing one of them helmets. No, not him. Yeah. Like like the bike helmets. I think was it was red. A, or maybe was he was on pink. a. Was he on a bike? No. Okay, I'm just No, checking. I don't think so. Maybe he had roller roller blades. No, I think it was just his feet. This moment was real, feet. real fast, huh? Real, real, real fast. fast. Okay. He, was, he okay. was holding something. I'm sorry, he's what? Looked, he was holding something. What did it look like? 
A stick? Or no, a maybe stick. maybe maybe it was maybe it was um uh like a rod or or a sword or maybe it was it was long and kind of round. He was going real fast though. How long? Like real fast. Like like, uh, um, like katana long or like dildo long. Like a, like a, uh, he he's like, like trying to like let, like move his hands apart. <laughs> he says like a, uh, I guess. Well, you don't want to you don't want to start stuff there. You be careful. Strangely, uh, uh, the the reference that um, Cam made is a surprisingly apt one for people who played Cyberpunk twenty seventy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, are the, these are the melee weapon sizes. <laughs> it's either the Bob Long dildo or. Katana. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the legs. I know, I know the references. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know the lore. I mean, I guess. I, guess the I really only saw like half of it, but maybe Katana. I okay, okay. Yeah. You don't. You, you ain't got no fancy cyberware that recorded any of this, huh? No. Nothing. No. No. You, uh, it doesn't look that there's too much up just there. Just that. It points yeah. to your. To, Chest? Yeah, yeah. No, that's not that's not that, trust me. I I You can see the tattoo <laughs> next to it that says uh turn it read, red you dead. It read you dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is apt. Um But um uh Magpie, go ahead and roll me a D ten. This is a reputation roll. To kind of remember something that you saw there that might be important. Nine. Um, unfortunately, that is not low enough. So reputation rolls, you need to roll under an amount. And so, yeah, there's something kind of like on the tip of your brain regarding the guy's jacket, but you can't really... Yeah. I mean, he had yeah. a jacket on too, but like I, I, like I said, he was going really, really fast, so I don't yes. really know what... Uh, what he seem uh... Nah, you go too fast. No. Yeah, I mean, he was wearing a helmet. What did the helmet look like? Can you describe that? It was like one of those, uh, you know, the real fast bikes. The helmets that you wear for that, and it was like red and black. Or maybe it was pink and black. I... Like a like a bike helmet. Crotch rock yeah. helmet, yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. Pink and black. Okay. Maybe, maybe. You get any scribbly okay. scribbling as to talking. Yeah. Um, I don't think they know too long, too much about this. Huh? I mean, he was he was a little guy. Hold like, on. Which one? Which one is? <laughs> Gino, Gino, the question that might help you here: if you saw him again, would you recognize him? That's always one the cops ask. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Let's say, let's say if uh, you you had him in a lineup, huh? We had this bro, this fella the uh, lineup here at the station. You'd be able to point him out, huh? Well, like a like a bunch of guys wearing helmets. Well, you'd be able to tell us what which yes. helmet you see, not which obviously what not what fucking mean? guy under the fucking helmet. What Unless you got X-ray eyes, you lying about X-ray eyes? <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be cool though. Right, fucking awesome. I need a fucking X-ray eye. Takes a note. Nah, I mean maybe, maybe yeah. I have an X-ray eye. <laughs> <laughs> if you bring up your data term and kind of flip through some like helmets that are kind of in the data term on site, just as like references for um, yeah. uh, 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 evidence. Uh, you'd eventually come to realize it is a Kusanagi biker helmet, um, which is typically favored by the Tiger Claws. And as you say that, um, El Mano, yeah, that... you remember that on the back of that jacket, oh. you had the t Tiger Claws logo. There was. Is it a, there's a tiger in it, right? Yeah, it's a tiger face. And then, like, it's the uh, a kanji for um, Tiger Claws, and then it says in okay. English, Tiger Claws. I didn't look super close at the picture intentionally. 
No, it's good. Solid play. Okay. And no, before you ask, she cannot share the picture with you. <laughs> we didn't see it. All right, good. <laughs> we got to get you a cyber eye with a brain dance recorder, though. <laughs> then we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Also, beating the shit out of a person filled with, while you're filled with like, insane amounts of adrenaline, that's also a pretty good BD experience. Oh, really exactly. takes the edge off the week. It's true. <laughs> Listening to your fucking middle management bullshit boss ask you for that fucking report one more fucking time. Uh, <laughs> just re record it with his face over top of the recording. Just, it just yes. haven't edited, yeah, so it's him. <laughs> of course. I've been in those jobs before. Hell yeah. We all have. <laughs> I'm in that job right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that um, El Mano would be able to identify the individual if you saw them again you now know yeah that they sound like they're affiliated with the tiger claws um or at least that's what they wanted people to perceive to see um yeah. and uh you know that almano is guilty of murder but it sounds like it was a uh, murder not the murder i give a shit about it's, it's not it's not a murder that's called it's not a murder that's even manslaughter in cyber or in, in night city because the two individuals had agreed to a fight and so the street it's rules of that it, yeah it's a whoopsie is what that's called <laughs> that's kind of like a that's kind of like a why are we holding this person kind of situation but yeah if you do pull the docs and try and see if NCPD has any information on that, there is uh, data that an individual named Aiden Gaddison, who was filled out with Chrome and might have been a Maelstrom uh, ganger, um, was um, found near the scene, deceased. His head was torn clean up. There it is. Um... Well... You think you can? I'm thinking we gotta see if the dog's done with the body. I'm thinking Drew. Drew. this big motherfucker here. We don't really need him no more. No. Uh, Unless he wants to see this awesome. fucking thing through with us, I don't know what he's fucking doing with his big fucking life. <laughs> I mean, possibly for ID, we could bring him along. You know, this uh, hey, hey uh. I would say kid, but I don't know if uh, older or younger than me. Um, <laughs> Mask makes it hot, for... you know? You can't see the yeah, fucking yeah. wrinkles and shit. You want to go for a ride along with Hogwash? You could be fucking 22. You could be fucking 68. I don't fucking know. You got any hair underneath know. that fucking thing? Fuck the fine now, huh? Well, I'm asking. You got any fucking <laughs> he hair just like, <laughs> He just has, like, the curve. Can I thumb through the... Uh, can... Uh, can I, can I thumb through the report to see if they have the mask off picture? Um, so, yeah, you um, do roll through it, and um, you do see it, but it looks like there's a blur, and, like, it looks like the second image looks like it was, like, the camera being thrown aside. So report, I throw it at the, I throw it at the class, and I'm just like, get up. I'm just like, fuck <laughs> that. All right. Let's, let's get a move on. I'm tired of this fucking interrogation shit. So, are you going to be releasing oh. um, El Mano based on your interrogation? I think so. Okay, and are you releasing him to his own devices, or are you... No. Okay. We're so, right along with Hogwatch. So, paperwork-wise, you're basically putting an injunction on his state of um, uh, imprisonment. Instead, he is basically being used... Um, uh, by as evidence. NCPD <laughs> as yeah. evidence. Yep. Got it. He probably still has blood on his hand, right? Um, no. It was raining. Well, it was raining. Ah. <laughs> yeah, the uh, video right. I sent was daylight because, I, again, I couldn't get no, it. No, you're be, good. I, I had the perfect environment for all the pictures we're going to go over here in a bit, but yeah. So you three get back into your individual vehicles. Who has El Mano? The van sounds like it's probably the van. The van plays El Mano. Okay, and then can I? Go ahead. I think I'll leave my squad car here. Okay. So what's fun about the squad the car is it does have um, automatic uh, summoning, so you can basically bring up your agent yeah. 
and have the car come to you, it'll take about 20 minutes. It's not going to be as instantaneous. It just appears behind you like in a video game. Right, 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 right. But it will drive out of the station and to you, wherever you are in Night City. Love that. All right. So, um, Cam and El Mano, do you have any conversation on the way back? So, uh, you got a fucking, like, I, I don't, it's probably not a day job with the fucking wrestling night job. You got a, like, e weekend uh, gig? Yeah, I take jobs sometimes. Okay, okay. You done any, uh, you done any TV work, huh? You trying to make a big old fucking name for yourself, big guy? Yeah. I mean, you, I have five. You either put on a fucking mask like that because you're trying to hide something or you're trying to make a name of something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like I, I fight, and then uh, people seem to like the mess, so. Okay. That's, that's what I did. Well, we gonna make you a big old fucking star, big boy. Do you think that El Mano would have, like, a radio station preference? Like, is there any kind of music that El Mano in particular would be, like, interested in listening to? Because I'm assuming Cam just has, like, the news playing, because, I mean, he strikes me as an NPR kind of dude. Okay, so like smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. <laughs> just like he well, just turns it and he's like. Da, 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 da. There is a smooth jazz channel. <laughs> Absolutely good. <laughs> so that's what that's and he, happening. And he's just like tapping his fingers on his legs as he's this like face. crunched into the seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, hilarious. Um, like, you, you know, just like that awkward elevator music. <laughs> there, there are stations like that on the NC, or on the uh, Night City um, radio broadcast, so that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, I'll have some an option. Okay, so you roll out and head south and head to the doc's office. It's probably closing around 5 o'clock at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, you make it back... Um, by this time, you have fully extracted everything. You've gone through the autopsy. This has been a couple, uh, like an hour or two, uh, but you two had pretty clean work and you know good teamwork uh, that developed very early on. So when they get back, you're kind of, you know, doing the final cleanup um, bit. The uh, body has been exsanguinated, drained, and um, you put that shit on ice because that's marketable. Um, yeah, he was dead, but he wasn't dead that long. Um, this is still good. Wait, people will buy a just like a bare corpse. No, the blood. Oh, the blood! I was like, yeah. Who wants a dead body with nothing in it? No, no, no. Yeah, the the, the blood. Besides this guy's family, I assume. You squeeze you squeeze a body for every <laughs> sentence it's worth. What the fuck do you want the body for? <laughs> Your name is Buzzard. <laughs> oh, I guess. Bone. All right, I'll well, we get the, we'll get the spinal fluid as well. Then, you know, sure, yeah, well. the marrow. Get it all. Um, so yeah, marrow can be um, used modified to create a dense bone marrow, which is marketable. Um, in fact, one of your people have dense bone marrow. Um, and uh, yeah, they come in and they come in with this guy that you don't know. And we've had El Mano described. Um, so new face added to the group. Hey, uh, big guy, this is uh, Buzzard and uh, Buzzard's partner uh, fucking... I don't fucking know. Vulture? What's your fucking name? Bucket. <laughs> Bucket. It's two Bs basically here. Bucket. <laughs> Buzzard and Buzzard and Bucket. Great. Buzzard and Bucket. <laughs> this uh, fucking El Mano, he seen to our uh, fucking... Hey. Huh? Seen to him running. So we're gonna tag him along until we find this fucking guy. You got anything? Yeah, come take a look. Um, He kind of pulls out some like disposable like rubber gloves and like for um, Cam and uh, Gino to put on. Oh, I get to touch shit. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yes, if... do, do you have any? <laughs> it's, it's all been cleaned, so please, gloves. Oh, of course, of course. I'll do that shit, my fucking fingernails, huh? I pay a lot of money for these things. It's one of the only things that people can see, you know? Hey, are, are there any snacks around here? Uh, I'm kind of hungry. Brogy world they have me sitting in that room for a while. Hold on. Steve, say it again, because that was very important. Pierogi oh, world is next door. <laughs> if you, there's a pierogi world hang, next door. If you're hang out a hanger, oh, 
if you don't know what a pierogi <laughs> world is, <laughs> it's a fast food shop that sells pierogies. <laughs> is it? Can I go over there? Yeah. Am I like? Am I like still under arrest, to you guys, or like? Well, let me let me escort you over to Pierogi World. I don't know if I get on some gorgeous. I mean, okay. No, don't don't fucking come back without fucking pierogies for the room, fucker. Oh, but what what can you want? Are you paying? I mean, yeah, oh. I could. This is a business expense. What the fuck you mean I'm paying? Can, I don't. Camel wire over. Spend? No, oh, right. gosh. <laughs> so, Almano, you uh, get a quick wire onto your agent that sends Ooh. the money to afford the pierogies. But yeah, I did notice a specific eye shifting um, note from um, you, Chandler, and I just want to make sure that's clear. It was set out in the open that this person was just in jail and was allowed to be free and doesn't know if they're not free or not. That was a thing <laughs> that was said out loud. A hundred percent. And the answer was not given. <laughs> Instead of also, saying whether or not you don't know why he's in jail, you don't know why they still have him. Why don't you just walk over while, there with you, huh? While all this kerfuffle's <laughs> happening and they're talking about pierogi world, very much my plan with the the blood pump was to give it to the doc as like a like a, a respect for the old old man in the room. Mm -hmm. But he like notices that's the only thing worth of value, and I put it a little bit out of reach of everyone else. So oh. they just. Say, there's a criminal in here. I don't know these unwashed <laughs> people, but they got some Clearly weird more cyberware going in on. Food. <laughs> so I just, I just moved that out of the way. I do want to track, too. The Rostovic Defensnikov is the actual most expensive item that was in that listing. I'll go ahead and paste the name of it so it's easier to find. I know it's and a... That's a speedware, right? It is not. It is a speedware uh, attachment. So it actually attaches to another piece of speedware. Um, let me go ahead and read what it says. Always on speedware augmentation that provides consistently improved evasive capabilities. User is treated as having an eight reflex for the purposes of being allowed to make evasion skill checks as the defender against range attacks and adds plus two to their evasion skill checks made during combat. Requires a neural link and speedware. So if you don't have a reflex eight, you can't dodge bullets. If you have a defense Nikov, you can dodge bullets. <laughs> okay. Okay, that, the plot thickens. So this guy <laughs> was pretty defensively equipped, and he still got uh -huh. splatted. Yeah. Attention. And so we're, I mean, we're gonna walk, we're just we're gonna say that we're just kind of walk talking to Cam and kind of this is our discovery. Like this is what he had. This is yeah. kind of what we're piecing together. The body is still kind of butterflied open. If you want to. Take a look. It's kind of pretty, probably I mean, pretty nasty. Especially if you're out, but That's <laughs> fucking. That's some fancy ass shit. This like uh, prototype shit, huh? Is that what you it's saying? It's luxury. Yeah, this this is a man who luxury, sure. was thinking he but may like, be attacked one day. But like the neuralware was special, right? Oh, yeah. the neural link. Yeah, sorry. And the then, neural link. Yeah. What were you saying, Steve? This is a man who probably thought he would be attacked one day. He's got a lot to defensive implants and he wanted to survive but he was killed very decisively so whoever is doing this knows what they're doing <laughs> it was very fast very brutal um i also uh i found three cups at the fucking scene i don't know if that means anything what do you mean by cups bucket oh, like, like very fucking quickly. like Fucking like cup cups, like fucking cup cups, 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 cups. Those and cups. It puts the three cups on the fucking table. Uh, I would say by this point, and based on the shuffling and the lack of concern, if there was any ice or fluid in them, that is now in the bag. Okay. That's why. That's what I was about to ask. I'm like, what was in the cups? If you know, it's, and if you don't, like, have you we, ever had we, a Moscow Mule? Yeah. That's what the cups smell like. Okay. Uh, I I would say ginger beer and vodka. We, <laughs> yeah, we assumed we assumed that it was more than one guy, because just it it's too efficient and too many skills. There's someone might have been a hacker, someone might have been super strong, and someone might have been real fast. But so, we we don't think that one guy pulled this off by himself. For handout assistance, you can see the cups there, on that okay. image. Yeah. Okay. Those are copper mugs. Yeah, they are. The tops are at least. They're not um, mugs, they're cubs. But oh, fair, I get, I get the Moscow Mule reference. I get it. It, it might have been a two-man on the one. It looks like they were having a conversation. There were three people, yeah. yeah. Well, there were three cups, unless somebody was, for some Double reason, fisting. spaced away. 
Check his liver. Was he double fisting? <laughs> Was he double fisting these drinks? Well, that that for us, I look over at Buzzer and I go, well, that makes a lot more sense if it was a two-on-one situation because that blood pump didn't even activate. It's still fresh. Cam, are you going to relay all the information that you have with the group at the table here? Okay. Yeah, now, now that we're discussing everything they found, Cam pulls out the laptop, he pulls out the files, he'll pull everything that he recovered from the scene out onto the table and, like, just show it. I, like, I, I was going to go look for a fucking Netrunner or something to look at this fucking laptop and shit, but I don't fucking, uh, like... He'll also pull his own recorded memory chip for the BD that he recorded in the scene, and he has a wreath on site, so you can basically just put the wreath on and view all of the mm -hmm. images in person as if you were there. So we're gonna go ahead and go through that. We've already looked at the coffee table, um, and I'm assuming everyone will kind of take a hit of the BD just to kind of get an idea of what's happening here, right? Um, so first off, first things first, the recording starts showing um, Orion, o Orion Ono's dead body. So that's what he looked like in his death um, the blood isn't present, um, I'll just say Twitch for whatever reason, um, at this point. But yeah, there's not a shit ton of blood. There, it, there should be a shit ton of blood. Glass is broken out, you can see Night City outside, um, and this is near the foot of the bed, which is on the left side of this first image. Okay? Then, the, um, coffee table we showed, next to the bedside, um, was a, um, shard case. That was missing the data shard that was inside of it. It looked like it was a Sonocho or Seocho um, uh, electronics data shard. Um, yeah, that shard is missing, um, according to um, Cam and Gino and crew. Uh, at the foot of the bed was a hot mess of clothing, women's clothing, um, and male clothing. Um, and the TV was still on. Um, there was a designer bra that um, the BD spent some time looking at, uh, which appears to be kind of designer wear. Um, it's uh, Jinguchi, which is a name brand that's like high tier Corpo brand. Uh, they only have like one store in all of Night City and it's located in the Corpo Plaza. Um, big deal. And then um, there's notes on the table, which Cam has the physical objects of. We discussed those in the side channel. Um, if you see anything written there uh, that you feel is pertinent, um, great. The uh, desk duffel bag, it's an Arasaka bag. Upon opening it, Cam, and checking inside of it, it does appear to be gear. It appears to be um, med tech, a med tech bag. Um, nothing Weird. Nothing special besides it. it is literally yeah. just a med tech bag. Um, just with Arasaka branding. Um, the uh, window, if you look outside and you were to look straight on um, of the hole or just the glass, um, the image you would see is downtown Night City. Um, you can see the, um, the bridge there that leads to it. You can also see the bridge on the right side that leads to Moro Rock. Um, and then Little China's kind of western side is this kind of blue apartment buildings um, and office buildings on this side there. Um, if you were to look left, you would see Little China and Watson, uh, Mega Building 11, the like. Uh, if you were to look to the right, it's just Coronado, Del Coronado Bay, um, as well as Mora Rock and the uh, NCX um, International slash um, translunar um, space or uh, airport um, and that's this one here um, and then if you look down uh, you would see that it's quite a drop um, from the I think 15th floor is where they were or s yeah s I think it's like 21st floor there it is yeah 21st um, so quite a bit of a drop um, those who are familiar with Compeki Plaza, probably not anybody here, hate to be mean, but uh, <laughs> those lights there are actually drive-ups. They're The cars come out from underneath where you're currently looking down, and they'll either go left if they're leaving or right if they're picking someone up. Or they'll enter in from the right if they're going underneath into the parking garage 
or they'll enter in from the left if they're going to the parking garage. Um, yeah, so looking at it um, and knowing a bit about the area, uh, Gino, and kind of thinking about it, if someone murdered somebody in that uh, hotel room, jumped out the window, landed on the ground, then ran, jumped over a 40-foot high uh, wall plus fence, landed on the opposite side, then jumped down 30 more feet onto another building, then jumped off of that building 50 feet to land on Cartwright, and then run up Cartwright to get arrested, uh, what <laughs> is the main question that's popping out in your head? The the path of operations for it to be El Mano has already been dispelled, but to further yeah. dispel it, this person dropped out and then jumped into the public populace when there were much better options. The water, staying on the beach, um, going around the building, any option is better than what yeah. is proposed. Uh, I saw this big motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, directly north of there is the Arasaka waterfront, which is kind of a, effectively, it's a transfer of power. It used to be a NUSA military base and Militech military um, supply before the Unification Wars, well, well before the Unification Wars. Um, it was transferred over to Arasaka when Arasaka defended um, Night City against NUSA incursion when they were kicked out back in the 60s, I think. Um, Night City is an independent city state. It's not a part of the NUSA. Um, heading south would lead you through Tiger Claw territory, um, kind of on a waterfront area. These four little kind of dots here that you can see, I don't know if you can see those, but those are helipads or AV pads, basically where um, aerodyne vehicles or, um, you know, uh, vertical lift vehicles will land. Um, and then these buildings uh, that are here, these are those blue buildings that you saw in image. They're just very large kind of residential slash um, commercial, office commercial uh, buildings. So all the information has been laid out, given you everything I can give you. It's all on, it's all been recorded. Got about an hour and 30 minutes to play with it. Well, you actually have three more sessions after that, too. So <laughs> I guess you can take as long mm. as you want. Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but what do we do? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess everything's out on the table for everyone. We have a couple of basic leads that we can kind of just run down to rule them out, like the sail on the oh, sniper rifle. Correct. So, yeah, that was something that was important. So the sniper rifle in question, uh, when that's brought to Bucket's attention, I want to make sure we understand the uh, Resetsu is not a commonplace rifle. This isn't something you just buy I'm at a out. vendor. Yeah. Um, the uh, Tsunami Arms Resetsu is basically military grade. Uh, armament. Uh, it can fire up to two kilometers, um, and that's in the hands of an untrained sniper uh, due to the targeting system that's deployed with it. Um, in the baseline model, it comes with a tripod, which is secure mount and with smart link uh, attachment, makes it so that it is uh, correcting the tripod. So when you're firing, basically the tripod will move to ensure that the next round goes where it needs to, or the first round is kind of assisted where it needs to be placed. Um, it has uh, spectrometer um, optics, which basically can see um, in ultraviolet or uh, infrared, both sides of the spectrum. Um, but the spectrum lighting or spectrum sighting also allows it to see in the magnetosphere. So it can pinpoint a target based on just its composition. Um, it's kind of insane technology, um, and yeah, no wonder it was 50,000 eddies. Yeah, Bucket, Bucket would know just from the name, because he's, he's pretty, pretty proficient and pretty knowledgeable, knowledgeable on weapons tech, mm -hmm. 
just knowing that this thing is like out and about in night city just knowing one of these is like around he knows it would be like high-end assassin work like that's there's nothing else other than like high political figures and things of that nature like i say very since you're kind of an ear to the ground kind of guy too like you're not a, a dummy uh you would know that there are at least three that you know about in night city one is in Dogtown and is held by the Barghest, which is a gang in Dogtown. Uh, yeah. Dogtown is basically a combat zone in Night City. Yeah. That's kind of a hot fucking mess, um, especially now because power vacuums. But um, there's at <laughs> least one there. Um, there is also one that you are aware of that is owned by uh, Kang Tao, which is a corporation in Night City. Um, they have it um, with uh, their security detail on the roof of their building. Um, you're just kind of aware of it due to just conversations you've had with uh, other interested parties. Um, and the last one you know about is, uh, strangely enough, um, in gang control. It has been acquired due to lost items in the Unification War, and it is held by the 6th Street Gang. Okay. And then this one's just free floating because Orino Ono this one, purchased it. Yeah, this one was sold by a vendor in Little China, uh, specifically a vendor mm -hmm. who's located in, um, according to the document, who's located in Mega Building H10. Which... And do we know where this weapon is? Like, does Cam or Gino know where this weapon could even be? Because if no. it was purchased by him for that much, like, this, this guy was playing in something. Like, this wasn't. You don't purchase this without some idea what you're gonna use it for. This ain't a toy. Yeah, um, on this fucker. I didn't know about this until I fucking read the fucking contract. Yeah, because that's an that's not that's not a toy. That's uh, you talking about? You saying he's a high level exec buying this weapon? Like, I mean, like not high high level, but like he's an exec. Yeah, buying buying a, an assassin tool like straight up. I I don't know. You got any idea that he had some big enemies that you weren't aware of, or someone trying to take down in like your whole news network or something crazy, or was he gunning for his boss? I don't, I don't know why else you would go for this. Like he got some I mean, disgruntles we don't know about. There's lots of disgruntles if you count all the fucking cyber cycles we taken down and didn't get mm -hmm. a chance to rehabilitate, you know. But that's that's not a big list. Well, uh, Bucket did just pose an interesting question. I want to focus on that because there mm. are historicals that you uh, need to think about. So remember the beginning of the Patreon side game. Do you remember mm. why you were hired on what you were doing? Uh, not offhand. No. <laughs> we were just shooting people, I thought. <laughs> you are shooting Maelstromers, and the reason why you were shooting those Maelstromers is because Orion Ono was attacked by them while he was visiting a fancy Italian restaurant. Some crazy weirdo named Reggie threw a grenade and fought a shit ton of them. But Orion was not too happy about the fact that these Maelstrom gangers showed up in high-class society trying to ice him. So he sent you two along with the Nadrucker uh, family, which would be uh, Guinea and his crew, and you just happened upon Riff and happened upon, uh, or you he hired Riff, actually. You happened upon Blaze, and you, as a group, basically destroyed the Maelstrom gangers at that bar, and then it was taken over by the Nadrucker family. So the main thing is, is did Orion Ono have people gunning after him? Answer is yes, Maelstrom gang. But uh, so far as you can see in this specific case, the only connection you have to Maelstrom is the motherfucker who held the man Punched the head off of one of the other guys. Yeah. Who killed us? Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, again, Bucket would just, like, reemphasize the fact that, like, there's you don't buy this without a very specific purpose. This ain't a fun tool. This ain't, like, showing off a collection piece or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, from looking at, lo looking at the cyberware this guy had, he wasn't a fighter or like a trained guy or anything crazy. So I'm guessing this wasn't purchased for him either. Like, I, I like, like, um, out of character, like John said, um, even untrained, you can hit insane shots with it, but you don't purchase this if you're untrained. Or at least you don't purchase it for yourself if you're untrained. Uh, at least that would be my assumption. 
It's currently missing, right? Like we just have the receipt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got the, the the sale contract. You do not have the rifle. Maybe he was looking to hire someone and went south, and they took the gun as a <laughs> as a trophy well, piece. Yeah, you plus know. all his plus all his um, his uh, data after they ripped out his neck. And what'd you find in his leg again? Uh, there was a uh, data shard. We haven't checked into it. Hey, sorry, there shard. is a data shard? I'm sorry, we should probably look <laughs> yeah, into sorry, that. Sorry, it was sorry. on the table. It like, was does sorry. that fit yeah, into the... So data shards have a pretty... Uh, they, they, they have a pretty uniform shape. Kind of like a... Yeah. You know, yeah, so it fits in there, sure. But the, the case, um, the serial number on the bottom matches the serial number on the shard. Yeah. Oh cool. I, like, yeah, we would point that and be like, "Yeah, sorry." Then buckets over here, like, "Nah, I'm drooling over a rifle." You uh, like, you read that data chart? Nah, I hadn't touched Wait. it other than pick it out. Fucking fantastic! <laughs> Can I insert that into my own neuralware? <laughs> yeah, I'm just yes. gonna. You slot the chart. <laughs> um, oh, that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need you. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> to make a very interesting roll. Bucket Bucket sees him doing that and knowing that he's dealt with the Reaper with Reggie, he immediately pulls his shotgun out and like he puts it to his chest like Fucking Cam has dealt with the Reaper. Yeah, like immediately <laughs> he's still I have raw dog dog and his data shark. Oh yeah. yeah I, uh, 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm playing a two in character. What do you want from me? That's fair. That's fair. These are fair statements. Everything you said is not incorrect. I'll, I'll, I'll push away the 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 shot gonna be like, oh, oh my um, god, I have a three. What? He, <laughs> one if he goes under. Just, um, just... So I would like for you to go ahead and make me a. Yeah, it's gonna be human perception. Weirdly enough. Uh, can I spend two luck on this? You can spend as much luck as you want. And if anybody wants to throw luck on it as well, that's the way we play here. If you want to toss uh, luck on his way. I got six luck. You know what? I'm going to drop. Oh, real quick. It refreshes every session. So I'm going to drop up. straight up four luck on this roll. Well, I'm actually going to drop I'll drop three luck on it. Yeah. I've seen what's gone wrong, and like I'm the one worried about this, and I'm the one who found it. I'm immediately dropping four luck onto this roll. We got so that's seven. plus seven? Yeah. I'm going to break down. Yeah, I have no idea what these guys are talking about, so I, have a, I was just like, what? He's just putting a data shard in. This is 17. Oh, thank God. Buzzard yeah, never looked. saw the Reaper. He, he, he was like, I'm going to avoid the crazy AI programs that are running amok. 17 is satisfactory. So the second you slot the shard, the first thing that you notice is that the shard <laughs> is not linking to your link accurately. And what you realize is, is that there seems to be some sort of connective uh, matter that's happening as if a netrunner were logging into your neural link. And um, when he connects that, that's when he fucked that. You pull the shard, but when you do, that netrunner seems to still remain present in your neural link. So oh, cool. you kind of pull the shard and then feel that presence still, and then you hear a voice. It's almost crystalline. Oh. And it says, where... Where am I? And then it fades. And that presence is gone. The shard still glows hot and then kind of cools off a bit after, you know, settling back down to neutral. Bucket quickly says, like, hey, let's I, I get it, you're all about the show, shock no. and all, but let's let's keep it clean here. Don't put that in anyone else. The shard seems the shard glows blue, and bucket yeah. something you would have noticed as you were watching is when Cam like had it slotted. There was like a whole last time during it before he pulled it where his eyes were blue, like they they lit up blue as if he was taking a phone call. Yeah, I would I would say I'm like I don't care if it's we grab some guy and do this to him, but like we're not we're not doing this with cops and everything. Like I need I need a little more presence of mind than that in this group. Like, I look at Buzzer to go, you know these guys? It's the same look I gave Letty about Reggie. <laughs> like, this is this is who you deal with? 
professional. How you make it? How you make it this long? Like, then just, Almano walks in with like a massive bag of pierogies, <laughs> <laughs> like a bucket of pierogies. <laughs> I was about to say I didn't know. I didn't know if they were back yet or not. So yeah, <laughs> it's right when they walk in, he comes in with it. <laughs> find these guys, just shoves a data shard in. Pierogies. What's going on? <laughs> no, I have a reason pierogies. to have a Russian accent. <laughs> I think Kroger's <laughs> Russian, right? I don't know. The Eastern Polish. European in Eastern general. Europe, yeah. Ukrainian, I think. Or Fair. Polish. Polish, I think. Well, but, yeah. me and Magpie were talking because oh my God. Uh, Almano, like, she was kind of kind of come up with uh, an idea of, like, accent. And I was like, I don't know, Hispanic accent might, it, I mean, it could go south. It, you, it could be bad. It could I'm be not sad. great yeah. at it. And, it's like, fair. every time I was thinking about him in my head, he just started turning Russian. And I'm like, that's also <laughs> not then, great. And then we joked that she was, doing a Kevin, she was doing a Kevin Gibson. She was, oh. uh, she, yeah, she was yeah. shift tacking into Which a different sliding accent. all around. And I was like, that's what we need to tell Kevin to do. He needs to try and do a Hispanic accent to get a Russian accent. <laughs> and if you go. want a French accent, you try and do a Russian accent. Accent to get a French one because <laughs> we're just bad at accents. <laughs> oh um, Does like standard like computers or laptops have ports for data shards, or can you only put them in your head? You can put them in computers. Well, do we have anyone got like a burner laptop or like a crappy laptop? That, like they don't want to use anymore that we can <laughs> we see have, what's on uh, here without risking someone. Yeah, getting I, have possessed. A, I have a laptop. One hundred percent. We got a walking burner over here. I'm just kidding. I don't want to put in the seven foot tall Goliath if yeah. something goes wrong. That's the <laughs> worst <laughs> option in this group. I don't put know in the old can. laptop that still has Windows ninety eight <laughs> or something. I don't know yeah, you, can. you can. They have a they have a neural link in. You do Neuralink okay. Link cool. Now, if we want to hire this guy to grab someone to put it in to restrain and check, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. This is Night City. I'm not above board. It's, <laughs> we'll, we'll go outside. Like, and we'll grab he's a like, person. He's got like a whole ass pierogi and he's like. You need me to grab someone? <laughs> that's that's more that's more Kinda morality on the board, table. So, <laughs> hey guys, this is a nice neighborhood. Okay, <laughs> just be going grabbing people and getting you had, possessed. You had, you had Guinea in your backyard. What do you mean, nice neighborhood? I saw that <laughs> he, guy. He just kind of like slowly sidles up to Buck and he's like, "Want a pierogi?" <laughs> it takes a pierogi. I take a pierogi. I'm like I say, no hey. fucking pierogi. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would do that. This energy is yeah. wonderful. Okay, so <laughs> who has a laptop and is it? It's not. It's not. Owner I have the laptop. Wait, it's right. my. I have my own okay. laptop. And you're gonna I use can, that one. Uh, we also have Ono's laptop, but that's locked. I don't know if that's physically locked. Electronic or like security would be locked. the way to get through the password. Uh, okay, lock. what's that under? That you can also tech, interface a, a laptop to break it because it's. I not... could I could try getting into it. I got I got decent electronics and security skill. Okay. Uh, you want me to roll for that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. 16. So this is a very interesting circumstance. You're sitting there and you're kind of like you know plugging in you know some devices and you kind of like look at it and you're like. <sighs> I'm just gonna go ahead and try. I get I get some free tries before it locks out. I'm just gonna try the dumbest thing I can think of. One, two, three, four, five. Enter. Opens. Sweet. <laughs> and I just kind of look over and I'm like, the M54 is making more sense as I'm looking down. <laughs> like if we get down to Cam down here as one of the stars, and like the guy above him. That's his I password. used it's lettuce making... for my fucking password. If it's a, B, I mean, it's C, password, you know? but I used fucking lettuce to spell the word password. Fucking lettuce? numbers. That's lazy as shit. Yeah, I said Your password. Password was lettuce. No, my password was password, but I spelled it password. Oh, all lowercase. Lettuce. I mean, I not, that's not my password. Hey, hey, so you said buddy, it was lettuce. You shouldn't tell people your password. No. <laughs> You gotta change that now. That's no, gotta be like password my, one. It's not my password. You see his eyes like going through a Chiron right now. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> He's changing He's his like password. slowly changing the password right He's now. Like, hey, anybody want to like, email? That was Orion's password. That sounded pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm gonna plug it in. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five exclamation point. Oh, yes. Always the exclamation point. <laughs> what, what kind of idiot makes it their, pa their password? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's my password. <laughs> um, so, 
uh, once you log into the computer, it's standard fare and 54 um, information, desktop and all that. Um, but um, it does appear. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't do that. Okay. My cat tried to knock over my green screen. Um, it does appear that there are a couple of documents that have been kind of put out um, onto the desktop in its center, um, almost intentionally. But when you go into it, um, Bucket, being a little bit more computer savvy than uh, others, you kind of quickly go in, check the browser history, check the uh, you know data caches, checking and everything like you know that you can kind of pull. It looks like it's been cleared. Okay. So the browser history is completely cleared. However, the home page for the browser, like the one it pops up to immediately, um, is oddly not the N54 website. Um, instead, it appears to be a website that is a, uh, affiliated with an establishment. The establishment is known as Totentaz. And those of you who have lived in Night City for more than a week uh, know that Totentaz is kind of like a slam bar up in uh, Watson um, and the industrial area. I'll go ahead and snap ping that. And Totentaz is kind of a maelstrom kind of um, known location. It's like their main point. In fact, it's the only point that they really have anymore after being kind of shot apart by um, this weird... Uh, crazy vigilante during the summer and also um orion ono's uh, little affair with uh, them on the north side but uh yeah the home page for the browser is totentaz's uh, website kind of just a junky older like 40s kind of website it's not great but then on the the desktop like i was saying there are three documents three programs that seem to have um, been there there's a copy of a program that's a uh, executable and when you try and kind of like look into it a little bit, you're not able to, it's beyond your measure. But what you're able to understand is, is it's a program that cannot load. So basically it's an executable that doesn't have what it needs to run. Um, the other two, one is a uh, image file um, and the image file in question uh, shows a woman and I will bring up that. Hold on a second here. Uh, this is miscellaneous. I just need to make sure that the handout does not have her name on it. Because <laughs> I've done that before and that is not fun. Mysterious woman. That's better. Let's <laughs> go with that. Um, one second as I try to share it. Thank you for being patient. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Where is the... Why won't it... Sorry, it's being difficult. Please bear with me. There we go. Show the players. And um, based on the location that she is in in the photograph, you're pretty sure this was taken in the hotel room. The wall back panel is kind of similar to the back panel wall near the aquarium. Okay, I, I immediately, upon seeing that picture, I turn it to Cam and Gino, and I go, do either of you two know this chick? She mean anything to anyone? Nobody knows shit. Okay. Is she wearing uh, Jinguchi? Um, ooh, great question. Make a wardrobe and fashion roll, please. Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Old man fashion. Let's let's see how long he's been. I like her ink. What's that under? Uh, it's social? under social, yeah. Would I recognize any oh. like any of the work she has, like for the ink tattoos? Good call as well on yeah. that. Go ahead and make a, a local expert, Night City. I'll use for luck because wow. I'm gonna need it. Okay. okay, remind me where I'm looking. Local here. expert's gonna be under education, hey. and it'll be so. down kind of a little bit. Okay. So yes, the um, the yeah, outfit she's wearing is a high fashion. It is not Jinguji. Uh, it's a um, fashion designer that is tied to Jinguji that you're aware of. It's called Angelique Boutique or Boutique Angelique. Sorry, the other way around. Um, it is um, a fashion designer that, as of late, has been doing a lot of um, luxury lingeries. 
Um, but they also deal with um, a lot of um, high fashion gowns. Would um, someone who wears Angelique also have Jinguchi in their wardrobe? Like, is it are they kind of adjacent yeah, yeah. So styles? Jin and, uh, Boutique Angelique is kind of a smaller. It's not a corporation. It's like a single individual and like a small like uh, business that work together. Um, the individual, like if you quickly do like a data search on your agent, uh, you would know that um, the proprietor, the owner of Boutique Angelique, is Lola. Um, she is kind of a you know well-known um, designer, and that's really all you know about her. Um, and then you would know too that they um, Boutique Angelique has been uh, they've been bankrolled. They've been you know given money. They've been uh, I'm trying to think of the word sponsored. That's the one I wanted um, by Jinguji. All right. Well, we want to look into this chick more. Angelique's literally one person. Let's be able to see if she recognizes her. Yeah, she, one lead. Lola is the face of Boutique Angelique. She does have designers and kind of like um, you know office staff, but she's not a corporation. She's more of like a business. So, yeah, like she would probably be at her store most days. I, yeah. like, is it low, pretty low key? Well, yeah, um, yeah she, it's it's she doesn't have a storefront, so she has she has her like you know where she works. But it's not a storefront. It's okay. more that she does like pop ups, or she puts her merchandise out at stores that are affiliated with Jinguji. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll kind of look over. Cam could be a, if you could find Angelique, could help you go identify this woman. And you start kind of spouting your knowledge of like you know fashion wear and specifically lingerie, and um, I'm sure every eye on you is kind of like. <laughs> well, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> hey, you shouldn't be judging, huh? <laughs> I'm something of a fashionista myself. <laughs> then the uh, local Night City, the ink is kind of uh, a smattering of different styles. Nothing that kind of sells you on it being... Um, uh, there's there's one part of it that kind of could be maybe Valentino adjacent, um, and that's the leg tattoo, the yeah. skull heads, which are kind of muerte esque. Like, but they also have almost a, a, a Viking ish patterning, so it could also be Maelstrom, or it could just be her yeah. own designs. You're not sure. Whoever this woman is, mm. she um, appears to have a decent amount of. Tattoo. Some of them are related to death, though. But who in Night City isn't fascinated with death in one way or another? <laughs> the uh, note from um, the uh, <laughs> the chat. Um, so what I'm hearing is buzzard pulse. <laughs> 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 or where's <laughs> goddamn? You know, maybe he's secretly Dr. Frankenfurter. That's a good reference, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what he does after dark. He says he sleeps in here. We don't know what he does. <laughs> you don't have a house. <laughs> Pretty sure there's also like a nightclub next door or something. You never know. Uh, there's, a, there's a BD lay, uh, lounge, I think. He moonlights at the Pierogi oh, World. That's Lord. what it is. <laughs> It's a BD Lounge slash Pierogi World. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Next, door, yes. next, next, door, next door, like, adjacent is the Pierogi World, but around the back and, like, over to the side is a BD Lounge. Yeah, he's so got the back Pierogi World, world is just a front? No. No, Pierogi World it's is a, a... Like Buzzard is a very much, like, Legitimate. what you see is... Like, the, 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 the light, like, the neon light Steve's outside... Steve's Pierogi. The neon light outside of uh, Steve's or Buzzard's shop, it just says Ripper Doc. It doesn't say, like, you know, specific name, vendor. And the reason why that's the case is he, it was like a Zeta Tech dude who was running it before. And then that guy could fell behind on his payments. And Buzzard's like, yeah, I'll just take it. It's cheap. It's pretty good rent. And so he just moved in <laughs> and, like, took the guy's shit. And, like, that's, that's how he, you know, it works. Like a Buzzard. He doesn't care if the meat's good. 
Take what you can scrounge up in this city. Oh, yeah. Chew it up and spit it out. Said he'll do the same to you. <laughs> Chews it out and spits it into his bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We, that was a good one. That was a good one. We got, oh, a, no. we got a solid. We got a solid buddy cop situation here. Uh, <laughs> got double double buddy cops, although only one person is really a cop. Um, okay, so we've got some good notes, oh, Jason, and we got some solid jokes. Uh, but let's focus back up on the, uh, the the optics here. So the designer bra situation, we kind of have a lead connect there. Yep. Um, I didn't mention what the third file was, did I? Nope, <laughs> we didn't get that far. I, I was stalling so good. So the uh, third file appears to be a, um, a very encrypted bit of data, but the th- name of the file to you, Bucket, comes off as curious it is a gps marker like a, it's like a location like a gps marker like a place any way i could i could quickly like pull that up yep. on my on my device so yeah data your your agent is you know it's got um uh let's see google and apple would be gapple or would it be uh apple <laughs> apple google apple google Google. Google. Uh, Google Maps. Um, so half of it works and half of it does fuck. Google. It. Apple is shit. Um, I but to be Google. The um, uh, location Goop specific. Quest it. Uh, Goop. Oh, so it's Google what's her name? Quest. It's what's her name? Um, Goop. Focusing up. So the location in question appears to be located in. What you know is Boxville, and I'll go ahead and snap ping you to it. Oh wow! Out in the boonies? No, not out in the boonies. Out in the junkyards. Those green mass, that green nasty mass that you can see there, that's a junkyard. So up on the dam, uh, before you enter into, um, before you kind of move across the dam, which is this kind of location here, there's a small road that goes up the hill. And it leads to a broken down um, uh, aerial carrier. So you've seen those big old like tanker trawlers that fly through the air with like the nuclear powered like boosters and they're kind of a- aerodyne. Um, I'll show you a picture of what I'm talking about. Hold on. I think yeah, I there's have... one in one of those the ones that you just showed. Yeah, they're massive. They put tanker or they put um, supply crates. One of the big ass. Shipping con- uh, shipping container. Yeah. That's the word I wanted. Um, good job, John. You did it. Um, but they put good shipping job. containers on, on them, and then they haul them, like, long haul across the, uh, the country, across the world. Um, but when they f- crash, um, <laughs> for covering them is utmost importance. However, um, if other people get there first, uh, they can use them for powering things due to the reactor inside they can use them to kind of build up their own like you know uh surplus of um currency and wealth due to the contents of the shipping containers so when one of these things falls out of the sky it's like christmas for the ne'er-do-wells and boxville is what's known as a combat zone um and it's basically at the top of the hill is the uh shipping container uh trawler and at the bottom of the hill is just junk that has been fashioned into a town. Uh, Boxville. Bear with me here. But you said only half the coordinates work. The other half just... No, 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 no. So the, the name of the file are, are the coordinates. Okay. The actual file itself is an encrypted mess. So, like, if you look at the file on the thing, it's like number, 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 number. And we yeah, kind yeah, of... Yeah, yeah look at it to rename it or whatever it's like big ass numbers right like a gps marker but then if you click it and open it up it just brings up like a, a like encrypted data um and it makes no sense because you are not a net runner yeah i was about to say i would look over and be like does anyone know a net runner only one i knew kind of got burned uh, by miltech uh, so yeah i'm like if anyone knows a well, net runner, player's gone no he's not dead no he He's not dead, but he don't like me, to say the least. Oh, um, I know. I, was say, I know that guy. He's he's pretty pretty good. Pretty good at his he, craft. He, he's pretty good. He just doesn't like to listen. Um, 
that's all Bucket would say about that. But I, w- I would look at Buzzard. Uh, I would also look at El Mano because I'm like, you gotta know some people. I don't know who your connections are in the oh, world. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a. Uh, I got. There's a couple of netrunners I think on N54's payroll, and I think uh, your chick's got one. No, looks at Gina. You're talking about uh, Gina. No, the other one you sleep with. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, you sleeping with ladies? <laughs> what? I'm confused. I'm confused. What's what? going on? So, uh, <laughs> Cam said the chick that you know, and you said, what do you mean, Regina? And then Cam said, no, you're just such a, you know, he said the other lady that you know, and you, the the presumption is, is that you don't have very many female connections, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, of course he means Regina. Pretty sure oh, Regina oh, has a net oh, yeah. And then you're like, payroll. oh yeah, I sleep was- with ladies. There I was sarcasm there that you missed, is what he's saying. <laughs> right over my head. Can we just say that Played your reaction a was in thick. character? I'll say that that Sorry. happened canonically in character. Like, yes, yes, that, that did happen canonically in character. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting, his, uh, he's getting his balls busted. I knew everything. Some of my jokes are for the room. <laughs> Two intelligence, ten sarcasm. I'm glad that you're you're <laughs> glad you were a cop for a while here. <laughs> Not a cop, I'm just the cameraman. I'm, never a cop. I'm just the cameraman. I'm cop, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we can get that file I think off to somebody. So figure that shit out, huh? And that's uh, right. So shipping container stuff you were talking about, Joe? What happened? The picture you sent. No, my screen out. just went blank. Hold on. Oh. Uh, John, technical issues. I was waiting for it to happen. It's <laughs> happened every so often. Yeah. yeah. The rare event, right? A couple times a week. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking God. Would I know anyone? Why do you think I got so many IT people in this goddamn Discord? <laughs> it's not because we're friends. It's, <laughs> it's because of the support. <laughs> yeah. I need specialists. I suck at this. <laughs> Is that why you have Turn a lawyer? Turn on team viewer. And a therapist <laughs> and an HR person. <laughs> yeah. Team viewer. And an all that business here. Oh, oh. I'll open the quick assist real quick. Let's, let's yeah, see what's going. Can open the quick assist. Every let's village, see what's happening. every village needs an idiot. Okay. <laughs> Let me just John, look at it. Let job. me just okay. try. I'm the gullible. Yeah. Oh shit! It opened up in fucking. Okay, so we're seeing stuff behind it. That's why. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and rejoin as player. It's gonna kill the music again, and we're gonna snap back into. It. We had one issue. Okay, it's not so bad. It's okay, not so bad. it's so bad. Question. Would I know anyone? Or is like most of my stuff, I just work for random people? So that's entirely up to you. Typically what we do when it comes to knowing a guy, um, you can say that you do or you can say that you don't. If you say that I know a guy and you come up with a name and you want them to be a netrunner, I will make that person up on the fly. If you genuinely know somebody in game, like as discussed, Gino knows Regina. Regina does have IT. Um then yeah, that's that's a situation that's also fine. It's entirely up to you how you want to play it. I'm really bad at that. Your call though. So I'm gonna say that he probably does it. No. Like he's <laughs> just, just he's just, just there to like out. hit people. <laughs> yeah. I would I would say you at least know a fixer, right? Because you gotta get oh, a job yeah. somehow. So that yeah, fixer yeah, might know he someone. Knows, like, so. a fixer, Padre, but, yeah. hungry, um, Dino, um, and also, um, oh know, yeah, Hungry knows fucking X too, right? I guess we could pro- try that route if we absolutely okay. have to. Okay. Yeah. Um, would backup work towards this, or is backup just specifically for calling other? That great question. To... Let's look at it together. Um, so backup okay. has a roll ability for being a lawman, also known as a cop. Yapper. A capper. Capper. Uh, so you have backup rank four, right? Yeah. You can get four local cops on the beat. 
They arrive okay. in two compact ground cars. They carry heavy pistols and are armored in Kevlar. That's it. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I think with uh, rank five through seven, you can get mounties, county mounties. You can get um, and horses. No. Right. I'm just like there's horses. Um, uh, <laughs> so this is like sheriff's department you're shit. So you're horses? contacting yeah. like people who are highway patrol. You're contacting people who are coming in with heavy armor jacks, with like you know who deal with external law enforcement. Um, right. I don't think backup ever lets you get a net watch. Goof. Yeah. yeah oh, sorry. Sense. Rank ten. You can start calling in net watch. Interpol, FBI. <laughs> net watch is basically like the internet FBI. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... So in a bit, you know. Kind of <laughs> yeah. A little low on my totem pole for that one, but right. it's, it's yeah, it's good to know who everyone has because I don't I don't keep great contacts as it's been shown, other than Letty. Yeah, and half her staff hates me, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they hate Reggie more. Yeah, they oh you know, yeah the grenade wheel and the legend. The legend. <laughs> well, the legend. <laughs> psycho, but. So yeah. not psycho. Sure. Um, but yeah. How do you want to? We still have the data shard. Do we want to put the data shard into the laptop? Uh, yeah. that's up. To, that's up to you guys. Cam is always start. down to try things. Into your laptop or into Orion's? I think into Orion's laptop. Okay. Who wants to do it? Bucket's cool doing it, being the one touching it. But if someone else wants to take lead on that, he will also step back and step in if anything starts going wrong. Can, we, like another can you get a copy of the information something? that's on the laptop as it is in case this data shard corrupts Rise that like, encrypted file? Can we like rip the encrypted file and the executable off of the laptop? To... I don't. I don't see a reason why I couldn't. That'd be up to John though. If I could just like transfer it onto like some like hard drive or like SSD or some crazy shit real quick. Just to so the main thing is, is we understand computers being kind of a Windows based kind of. I have device. two blank memory chips. Let me explain. Okay. We understand yeah. systems being systems. We know how yeah. they work. We get that. What you're dealing with is a net architecture inside of the laptop it has its own net architecture for okay. you to securely take things off of the computer you need to interface and since you cannot need to be a net runner got not. it right so basically i'm at and then then bucket's asking the group like like do we think risking this information is worth plugging that thing in right now or again do we need to wait a hot second that's and... a, we can plug it into my laptop then you sure yeah, you, got anything, you got anything sensitive you worried about? It's got. No. I'm talking. I'm talking about you got any of your data on there because we don't know what we're plugging in. We don't know where it's going to just shoot off to. So you got your real name on there. You got information where you live and shit. It's a work laptop, but it's not a personal laptop. Okay, as long as, as <laughs> it's long as tied to the corporation, cool. not to me specifically, would be my guess. Sure. So I would. Go ahead. I would look over to Gino and look at him, be, knowing what Cam's already done, like trying to plug that straight into his neck and ask him. Do you think that's a cool idea? Just to throw this straight into his laptop, he, he's cool with it being a burner. Like I can tell they're a partnership right here, so I'm looking at his partner also <laughs> being like, "Hey man, you think this is a good idea?" Because I've seen what he's willing to do, and it's not great. Ten fifty four shit. I don't give a fuck. Okay, then, yeah, I'm game. I'm game to plug that thing right into if his you plug laptop. It, in, it does nothing. If you check it in your laptop to see what it is, it appears that it is one program. That appears to be like teraflops of data, okay. like insane amounts of data on the shard, which is totally possible. But it's more amount size than you've seen on any shard that you've touched. Um, and the uh, file type, uh, there's no file name. It's just kind of like a strange string of like symbols. But the file type is .skc. S as in Sam, K as in um, uh, Kibble, Thanks. and then uh, C as in Cat. Would that mean anything to me? Like, at all? Should I, could I do a, a, like, a roll for it? Um, let's see. 
Uh, or anyone, of course. Like, I, it's a great question. Uh, Does that, that mean anything to anyone? That is a great question. So the file type is .skc. Mm -hmm. it's, the file's unnamed, it's just the type is .skc. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it's got a name, but it's mostly just, yeah. like, symbols. Gibberish, yeah. It's yeah. one of those weird don't-click-link-looking yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then I would say... The fishing test email? What'd you say? I would say... the Oh, the finishing test email. Mm. Um, I would say that the role would be... Sorry, this is a very good question. It's just one I did not prepare for. Cryptography. <laughs> cryptography. Can make a cryptography role. What, what is that under education or something? Education, yeah. It's not the great. I'm, I'm going to roll for it just to check. Yeah, remember you can but, spend luck if you want to. I, I got two luck points left. I want to look at it too. Can I see it? I mean, you can stand over my shoulder. You're seven feet tall. Can I'm not going to stop you. Nobody can in. stop you. Yeah, I was about to say. Like, <laughs> no, I might. In front of me. <laughs> she, she rolled us. Um, I'm going. I'm going to use two luck points, so I'm yep. going to be out of luck at this point. You have no idea, uh, Salvador. <laughs> no. Uh, so it's like all that. Looks I got. Cool. I got 14. Would I know what the file type is at least? So you do not know for certain, but. In cryptography spheres, um, so those initials don't really come out as anything that you're you're popping in. But I know you kind of like as a computer savvy like player, um, you would know that like file names have like it, it means something. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This... It's not just J P G. The the J, the P, and the G, G mean something. I don't know what it means. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you might. But the point is, is that the SKC, you don't know for certain, but the only thing that you can think of that's kind of in popular, kind of like the zeitgeist, would be soul killer construct. And I would, I would say, uh, like, I would look at Cam and be like, that thing you try to plug in your neck, like, the only thing I can think of that runs with that string, it would be the soul killer construct. And I would look and wait for a reaction out of Cam to see if anything connects and by that I mean like that he just tried to plug in something that has that as the file type. Like to see if there's any so, uh, reaction. You wanna plug that back in? I did hear a voice when I plugged it in. We oh, talking pretty cool. We talking pretty male, cool. female, we talking crazy. It's just like robotic. a weird computer y voice. I don't I don't think it had gender. I almost made a great joke. Was it non-binary? Well, it was binary. It's digital <laughs> <colors>. <laughs> <laughs> it It's a string like of ones and zeros. It's a string. It's non-binary, binary. We love to see Got it. Him. Um, <laughs> so it sounds like you remember kind of AI then? Yeah, you remember Smoke what they said? Her? You said you, you said you heard a voice. Where what? am I? I think that's right. Steve. But then it just kind of faded away. It's short. I imagine if I left it in longer, it might have said that's more. That's a good I'm question. Talking to I got a little nervous. You know, it didn't seem like a good idea. There are, no, try it again. There are robots in this world, right? Yeah, robots, mechs, uh, drones. You bet. Um. Are they typically like run on programs, or does AI exist? Or is AI rare? Or like so, what's AI the, what's... is not rare. It is very common. In fact, it's so common that it's probably present on all of your phones. Um, AI is um, it, it's everywhere. However, AI in the sense that you're talking about, like actual, like conscious, yeah, like robot. sentient <laughs> construct. Yeah. The AI that is more common is more kind of like what we're rolling with right now, but like to 11 um the ai that's more crazily found it's behind what is known as the black wall which is a established defense grid of the old against the old net which is filled with rogue ais which are ais that are genuinely sentient um the reaper is a rogue ai that is believed to have passed through the black wall um and we know most of us understand how that works, um, except for Buzzard, who was just not there that day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we uh, have seen no other real rogue AIs in these in this series, so I don't think your characters would be too technically savvy with them. Yeah. Um, but 
again, with, um, you know, the 14, it being a 13 DV bucket, you're kind of understanding that, like, there are kind of stories in the streets that um, Arasaka is able to kind of, like, kill people and lock up their souls inside of, like, the computer. That's, like, a, a thing that's very commonly spoke about amongst, like, net runners that you may have, like, you know, sat down with and treated with. Would I feel comfortable in this situation hitting up, like, for a contact, Letty, knowing that she dealt directly with Reaper and knowing she has dealt with AIs like this a bit more commonly? Yeah, what I'll tell you, though, is, is uh, I know that the timing of where we're at chronologically with her game and your game, which are actually happening at the same time. Yeah. So she's busy. <laughs> so okay. you call her, it will go to voicemail. You can leave a okay. voicemail and I will go ahead and um, have you type that out if you do say it. So I can then read it to her on Friday. Okay. Just for RP purposes, Bucket, are you saying when you like have these deductions, are you saying them out loud or are you just thinking them in your head? Um, most of them I would be saying out loud. I, um, hey, the Arasaka put, trapping people in data chips. Are you saying that out loud or are you just like, man, that's yeah, a rumor? I, I, I would, I would say, I would say it like there's been, there's been rumors on the street. There's been like things that have been said and I've, I've gotten to see what a rogue AI can do. So I'm not, it's not shocking that another one could exist that's just running amok. It just doesn't seem like this one's nearly to the level that the Reaper was, like to the aggression it was, because Cam is still talking. Like, maybe it's not the same as I was before, yeah. What this thing is, maybe it's who this thing is. Yeah. Let's let's try it again a little bit more. There's there's a person in that thing? I I stand by grabbing, having old El Mano here grab someone and like, it, it, like that, old or some poor sucker. Salsa. I'm not. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, I'm not ethical. That's not. Uh, that's not what Bucket is. Bucket is. He's trying to survive. But in this situation, like, if we think the best course of action because it's not doing anything with the computer is human trials, I'm not. I I, I know Gino standing here <laughs> as a literal cop, like a detective. But like, I I'm know he wants. At, I'm I, stared at you. I, I look at. I look at. I look and go. He wants a story. And, like, I don't know uh, how to spin stuff like that, but I don't think we would <laughs> be oh, heard. too crass. I want to put yeah, in context something real quick for the audience, just so she's aware. I'm not, uh, I just want to make sure it's clear. It's currently 5 p.m. on the 24th. So that would be right when, for those who watched the Friday game or who were in it, uh, Letty would currently be either on her way or arriving at REO Meat Wagon with Nina in critical but stable condition. Does, so just so we know where, why you're not picking up the phone. Yeah, does Bucket know Nina's situation, or is that that's completely out of his head space? No idea. Never met her. Okay. Okay, then then yeah. Again, I know, I know looking at Gino and how he said he was staring at me, I'm like, okay, maybe we don't grab some gonk, but like maybe if... In the next couple of days or something, someone who comes in real bad condition, I bet it might not be the worst thing if they go and die anyway to check it out. Um, like, well, we than pick up a gonk, but I, don't, so I also don't care if we pick up a gonk. Oh well, because <laughs> can a neural link only be put into a human brain, or they're like like robot or artificial heads that they use to like advertise them that like so obviously neural links attached to the neural Neuron. passing the pathways of like the brain right they're connected to um, nerve connections and the like it's very much a human interface right however mechs and drones have similar artifice however it relates to a body that's not organic it's dealing with maneuvering and controlling um an artificial mechanical thing i guess i'm just trying to you wonder if there's a way we can are you wondering if you can put a program into a person that's a program into a robot and then it's gonna yeah i'm just trying not to duck somebody <laughs> like is there an alternate path <laughs> like... so i will say like why are you so a robot's not gonna be cheap i don't Decent and you'll definitely fixer? need if you want to get a robot, you will need to get a fixer. And, what's uh, what's not cheap? What, what do you mean by not cheap? So the cheapest one you'll find is about five 
five large. Five K? Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. I mean, and we that's, got probably that's like an old rust bucket kind of security drone from Kang Tao or something. We probably have that at least. We probably have more than that in the cyberware right here. Like we could probably. Uh, we got in working cyberware. We ain't got that. Broken cyberware, yeah, we got that. But in working <laughs> cyberware, unless you know someone you can drop off a broken experiment to, and they'll pay you for it. I don't know. I don't think we have five k. I think we have about two and a half. And with you putting it in everything, maybe three and a half. But I'll say this: if you guys want to do your, if you guys want to grab a gonk off the street, just take them somewhere else. Like take them to the like the the, the drain pipe just off the end of the dock. Don't bring him here. There's, well, yeah, you don't there's want eyes everywhere, and I got him. I got him. People off the no. fucking street, yeah, huh? Yeah, I don't need a reputation that look, as a That look scab. bad for business, just having bodies disappear and then get dragged into your fucking front door, huh? Yeah, the last thing I need I... is a reputation as a scav. Sure, sure. sure. No, I'm just looking the other way. You got anyone on death row you know of? <laughs> I know, I'm getting a little off, off <laughs> on the rocker there. We're looking but for a do, do I? Do I? Do what? Yeah, you're looking for it. We're looking for main on, oh, on God. dead. Like, um, could could, we could you just go and find one of the murderers on your desk or the murderers on your desk and yeah. just shove a program into them and force <laughs> them to suck it up? Yeah, that's totally something you could do if you want it. What are the good guys? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. We got a man named Buzzard here. What do you mean we're the good guys? <laughs> He's the one trying to keep you from yeah. doing it near his shop. <laughs> uh, oh. Would I have with Miltech? Would I have any? Con uh, man, that seems a little risky. Actually, throwing Miltech into this. Never mind. So, I don't want to. I don't want to do we that. We still have I saw what the net runner that Regina knows that we could just yeah. contact to get the net runner to do this. I feel like that's safer. That's uh, much much safer than any of us just fucking around with it. If you're concerned with like fucking around with it, we don't need to shove it in some dude's head and just see what fucking happens. Like, there's X, steps right? we can take before we get there. That, that's X, right? Uh, X. What are you talking about, X? The network, the net runner. That Regina knows. Oh, that Regina knows. Never mind. Sorry, I was. Oh, if you're trying to get a hold of X, you can give him a call. But I'm gonna tell you, if you do, are you doing it? What do you think, Cam? He's also if... busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming he's also busy. But if you want, I, I just want, I just need I to know, know if it's know. canon that you try and call him. That's that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I mean, I can give him okay. a buzz, so sure. I need, I need you to go ahead and leave a message. And so I've got one coming from Chandler, and I've got one coming from Zach. And I need you to go ahead and write those messages up and put them in <laughs> so I can read them to the people. Do you want me they... to just send you a voice recording That's... and you can press play on oh, Friday? Oh, God, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be swell. Sure. <laughs> there we go. Just load it to roll reach. twenty and then <laughs> <laughs> press play. You gotta be listening to your music right now. It's recording time. <laughs> uh, I guess we can contact uh, Regina's person then. Yeah. So if you I'll contact Regina, uh, she'll say, "Yeah, um, hey Gino, um, how are things downtown?" Not oh, great. Um, mm. I, have to, I have thirteen homicides today, twelve yesterday, fourteen the next day. It's, it's, uh... You looking for side work? You know, I'm always looking for uh, something else. Something like the, uh, back in the, you know, the old days. Well, I got something I'm needing a bit of help with. Oh? Yeah. I got a cyber psycho up in Watson. And, um... You don't say. He's holding himself off in a pretty defensible position. And um, it's not going to be too long. Probably end of the day, nightfall. They're going to call Max Tech in. Fuck it. Um, well, but a little. Um, I mean, I guess I can't speak for the rest of everybody here, but a little bit of. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm working a gig right now with the. Oh, were you calling me for something you needed? <laughs> hey, hey, you know, you know me. 
Oh my god, Gino. Put it on fucking speakerphone so we can all ask. Right, You're taking right. too goddamn long. Hanging right, out with Cam again. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> you, you put your yeah. agent on the table, put it on speaker. Yeah. And you hear it with Cam again, huh? Hi. Hey, Ani. How you doing? Hey, Cam. I need help with so... the cyber psycho. I know it's not going to be on film or large, but I genuinely think this person is suitable for the program. And, um,. Max okay. will probably be okay. in there by nightfall, and uh, he's holed up. Oh. There's at least twelve individuals he's he's killed, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Maxak gets a hold of him, he's dead for sure. Of course. Um, how, uh, how about we uh, make a little trade skis there, huh, Regina? So this you need is us to take going. care of the uh, psychos. I need a little help with uh, one of your little netrunner buddies. What do you need? It's probably quicker for me to do it. I uh, I just, I, I got some files and things, this data shot I need analyzed and looked at. Some, some possibly nasty stuff. Huh? I'm going to need hands on that. I don't think you're going to be able to pass the data shards information over the phone. Nah, no. nah, I gotta drop it off somewhere, but we got the van and Gino's got the car. Well, if you're heading north, you're gonna stop by me anyways. Sure, sure. Come on over. You know where we I'm at. We make the drop. Now right. a good time? Now's a better time than any. You okay if we bring some friends, huh? You got friends? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we got we some got... friends, I'm sure yeah. they can use this little leg stretch, huh? I just it's look at El Bono Bye. just shoving pierogies in his mouth still. Yeah. Just... Literally, that's all he's been doing this whole time. Gino, uh, you hear her say, uh, I thought since they put you um, in downtown, all you have is co workers, no friends anymore. But, um, no, yeah. I, uh... Come They're on more over. friends of friends for this guy over here. <laughs> so we got a shit ton of vehicles. <laughs> we, got a, we got a motorcycle. Uh, I think Buzzard has a vehicle. I can't remember. Uh, fucking Gino's got a car. Fucking no, I, I don't have a car. Okay, cool. Good. Amato <laughs> and Buzzard, no vehicles. Everyone else, Who wants to vehicles. be seen in the squad car? I don't. Did you leave the squad car? You left the squad car back. That's right. We left the squad car, yeah. We All did, three of us came in the van. So then van, 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 and then you probably rode your bike here, Bucket, so you're probably going to roll on bike, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if, if, if Doc wants to be a backpack for this journey, sure, but if not, I get it. How he close be, of partners are you? Yeah, he can be a four-man <laughs> in a squad car. I'm, I'm better with him being a four-man so I can get away if need be, but that's out of character. <laughs> It's okay, I'll send the back with the big guy. We'll do a quick physical. I'm very curious on his, because he's more, more bio. What do you say? It's like bioware? Yeah, it's mostly like, bio yeah. stuff. So, like, yeah, um, if you do a quick uh, kind of. I haven't I haven't dabbled in that. I could have a little. You could run a, little, run a few tests in the car with the med scanner. <laughs> yeah, if, if um, El Mano's cool with it. What is he doing? He's checking you. Just to see I just like, want to see what, what you're just built different. Your I'm performance levels. He he's yeah. impressed. Okay. So, um, cyberware for El Mano. Uh, double grafted uh, muscle and bone lace. Uh, trauma team dense marrow. So um, his bones are basically filled with like super dense marrow. So he hits harder. Like his fists won't break when he punches somebody. His mm -hmm. elbows won't shatter when he's throwing the force of a thousand suns at you. Um, <laughs> Neuralink, chipware socket, uh, personal link, you know, the standard shit. Uh, the Mortech Berserk is pretty neat. Um, it's not the top tier Berserk. You've seen, you know, better speed wear in a person. But it's pretty devastating at the same time, um, especially with the total package. Um no I was in the hole, no audios, no limbs, all meat, but all kind of like neatly packed. Any like skin weave or is this skin normal? Uh skin weave, internal cyberware, um or external cyberware, subdermal armor, standard. Okay. Uh, I was about to ask about an armor jack or some kind of like Nope. Uh you look, just you look. good old fashioned uh nanite reinforcing plates underneath the skin layer. Uh oh, yeah. so very nice then, some mono. You, you need to upgrade, you come see Buzzard. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you haven't had a Ripper Dog since you're kind of uh, turmoil with the animals, so you've been kind of running off the same 
kit since then. Yeah. Oh, my screen shifted because of the cat. That's been there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I the did bad, not even the, notice. The bad wolf in the background. <laughs> uh, it's from Doctor Who. Um, in, in, if you don't know. Um, but anyway, great. So you drive north. Um, you're heading to the Yaida building um, in Watson, uh, I believe. Yeah, it is this one here. Um, formerly Gino's apartment. Oh, now it's falling on me? I got no luck. What is happening? Sorry, folks. The cat knocked it once, and it's just a hot mess behind me. Uh, okay. You can't see it because of the void. Focusing back up. You get to the Yaida building. You head up to, I think it's the 16th floor. Uh, enter into a space. The first thing you see is a Militech uh, HK-31, uh, or uh, Mark 31, uh, heavy machine gun pointed straight down at you. Um, on a uh, Arasaka turret. Um, it doesn't shoot you to death, uh, presumably because of company. Um, you walk in, you see a couple people in these small little rooms, like on computers. Uh, one of them is in a Netrunner chair, currently jacked in, wearing a uh, Netrunner suit. And then you head into the main room, and it's this beautiful, like, corner uh, windowed area but the room is just covered in a mess there's like mattresses kind of laying on the floor uh, very much function not form uh, but she's standing there at the front with a laptop near her um, and she kind of turns as you enter into the space welcome back Gino good to see you again Cam oh I know you she says as she points at Almano yeah, you're um, on the circuit, right? You've been doing a lot of punching street fights? Yeah. <laughs> he in trouble? And oh, you bad. know, Gino, that uh, she means is he cyber psycho? No. Okay. Um, you look familiar as hell, old man. I don't know where from. And uh, haven't met you as she walks forward. Uh, Regina Jones. Or Reg Right, yeah, Regina Jones. Yeah, I reciprocate. I say it's Bucket. I shake her hand. Yep, she's got a pretty decent, sh uh, you know, uh, shake there. Um, and the name's kind of like strangely familiar. You think you might have remembered it from like um, when you actually paid attention to like news radio back yeah. in like the six or you know like the mid sixties. Um, you think she might be a media of some sort, but you're not sure. Um, she'll kind of, um, you know, take everybody in and say, so what do you got for me? So a couple of, a couple of little pieces here I gotta figure out. There's this, uh, fucking laptop, this thing, with the fucking some encrypted program, and I got this, uh, this here, uh, data shot, huh? What's it got on it? I think it might be... What'd you call it? Uh, um, uh, um, an AI? Uh, Bucket uh, would uh, chime in and say, uh, "It's a, it's, it's a, a rogue. It seems to be a rogue AI." Rogue it seems, AI. It, That's it. Seems, it. I knew it, it was kind of nasty. AI. Is this the that rogue stuff AI. you were dealing with before? Nah, 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 nah. Not, I don't not think it's no, 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 nothing like that. Well, maybe something like that. We don't honestly know. That's why we're here, huh? Chase. It seemed a bit nicer. Yeah, I would. I would bluntly say. Cam had it plugged in for a second or two. It's definitely not Reaper. It's not that aggressive. He she wouldn't holds, still be here. She holds out her hand and then yells towards the back, Chase, bring out a remote deck out here. And a uh, guy comes out of the back. If you hand her the shards, she hands it over to this, uh, you know, just younger looking guy, probably 18 or so. Um, very much scrawny, not a lot of cyberware. Um, he's got two external uh, cyber decks on his hips. Um, and then he's got this other cyber deck he's holding in his hand, which looks like it's old, beat up, and it's attached to what just looks like a, it almost looks like a fire, a small fire hydrant, but it's attached to it, like plugged into it, um, like through a, almost like a USB cord kind of deal. She takes the, um, the shard, or he takes the shard and then kind of holds the deck out looking at the console, slots the shard in, and then kind of looks at it. For a bit, uh, it's uh, missing its um, 
run function. Whatever it is, it doesn't seem to have its run function. It's oh, just data. Th I bet that's the fucking the dot exe thing you seen on the fucking computer. I bucket. Yeah, I would. I, the... Yeah, I would. I would have him pull out the laptop and show him that file as well, and be like, "Does this match up? This ain't my area of expertise. I don't think it's any of ours." So he pulls over a table, just like off to the side, that's on like wheels. It's almost like a, like a morgue table, um, like that's, that you lay a body on. Kind of reels that over, sets it down. Um, Sets his little cyber deck off to the side. Opens up your laptop. What's the password? Uh, it it is one two three four five. I wish I was kidding. It's it's just one two three four five. Wait, in that order too. Yeah. There's a rogue AI or part of a rogue AI I, on this laptop. I look at that net runner and go, man, this was this was this was someone higher up. I never claimed they're smart. Do, 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 do. His eyes go red once the uh, laptop's opened. You see him kind of pull out his personal, link it to the computer. Then you see him kind of shift, shift, pull out one of the other externals, set it on the table, shift, shift for a bit, and then you see the program on the screen kind of duplicate, and then you see one of them disappear. He then pulls his uh, second external out of it, shuts the laptop, picks it up, and hands it back to whoever, takes his two external cyberdecks, looks at him, and goes, eh, this one's worth more. He uh, unplugs the um, he unplugs the data shard. He uh, sets that on the table, connects the two cyberdex like they like link together, and then swipe swipe moves the program over to it instead. Pulls the more expensive cyberdeck he doesn't want to ruin. Puts that back on the holster. Takes the weird external thing he had that looked like a fire hydrant. Attaches it back to the cyberdeck. Then attaches the data shard, and then. Huh, and then turns the uh, cyber deck around, and then hits a couple buttons on the side, and you see a digital display that appears to be a woman's face in blue lights. That's kind of looking at you with like an almost horrified looking on her uh, look on her face. You okay, lady? Yeah. Where am I? About two uh, floors up. Well, I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. No, everything's... It's all made out of lights. Where am I? Is this heaven? No. <laughs> I no, show you this ain't definitely heaven. Definitely not. Ain't no one in Night City make it to heaven. Where <laughs> are you? Heaven. The people that are talking. You can't see us? Like, not literally, he leans down and he's just like... I, I grab Elbano's <laughs> hand before he can touch it. Oh. Yeah. No, he touches it. It's fine. Chase will say... It's fine. Uh, she's okay. Uh, she's currently inside of the net architecture of the cheap cyber deck. Um, I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. He, <laughs> he, 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 but he uh, Chase would say <laughs> she's not. She's not real. And then you hear, "What do you oh. mean I'm not real? I'm certainly, most certainly real." Why don't you tell us who you uh, who uh, who you are? Huh? My name's Anika. Anika Chowdhury. Why do I know that name? Because I'm a devious motherfucker. You're an you, asshole. <laughs> you? <laughs> oh my god! Uh-huh. <laughs> I love Elizabeth in the chat. <laughs> How did I get I here? Bucket doesn't know anything about that name. Neither like, does doesn't... anybody in this group. No, okay. no, I have no idea. <laughs> like the, the player characters have no idea who the fuck this person is. The okay. players who so played in 2045 right know exactly who she is. I don't even know as a player. I don't even know who she is. So that, that means absolutely Same. nothing to me. It's, that it's, was my character. It's a couple. <laughs> it's a couple years ago. Yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. cyberpunk. Uh, it's when we did red. The time of the red. red. <laughs> Yeah. Having the uh, appropriate reaction in chat. Yeah. <laughs> what no, is happening? Great. Um, I believe it said, um, get the fuck out, flips table, kicks wall, screams into pillow. It's the response <laughs> from the former player of Crystal. Wait until she Hilarious. finds out where Crystal is. Uh, that's, there are more yeah, data no. shards to find, John. Did anybody pay oh attention on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, at least I know Sunday's my character's there. already dead. There's no the, way he survived the anything. The crew on Sunday is trying to steal a case full of these. Okay. Oh, oh right. no. 
Right. Yeah. Oh my god, no. That Arasaka currently has control of for some reason. These are all fucking relics, huh? Uh, they're not relics. No, no, no. Uh. They're constructs. Relic is very okay. different. So relic is a uh, data shard, but it's attached to a biochip that has the ability to manipulate the biomechanical nature of the individual who it's slotted in. Um, so, and that's in response to uh, damage or at a trigger inspired by a outside source. So in uh. the Cyberpunk 2077 game, the relic chip is spurred to take over the body by the trauma that was oh. dealt to me. Um, but the construct right. is Johnny Silverhand, and Johnny Silverhand is the construct that would take over the body. The soul killer construct that Johnny is is the same thing that Alt was in that game. It's also the same right. thing that a lot of other people have been over time. Uh, a soul killed person. Soul Killer being a program that Alt Cunningham made back in 2013, I believe. Arasaka took it, used it on her to test that it worked, and then started using it on other people to imprison, question, interrogate, or uh, rehabilitate. Bucket again slowly looks at Cam. I hope he doesn't notice and just be like, just stare at him, thinking back to the fact he literally plugged this into his neck and just thinking back to the first time he met Reggie. And being like, these are the people I run with now. This is just what happens now that I've dealt with some other people. Chase will say, I, this isn't a rogue AI. Um, that's a heads up. Um, that's good to know. It, it appears to be just a construct of an individual who was alive at some point. Um, Can I ask him to cut the audio for her so that Blair, she can't hear us saying this? He, he holds up his hand, and you can see he's holding his thumb against his uh, his index okay. finger. And it's almost like he's compressing a button there. And he's like, it's okay. Okay, yeah, because she started to freak out at not real, so I don't want to hear... He nods his head. I, I caught on. I, uh, I can catch that kind of thing. Anyways, I'm pretty sure she'll be going through a lot eventually. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea to keep her active, though. Um, we may want to turn her off. Should we at least find out if she knew Orion Ono, or if it was just a coincidence that he had her shard? Like he oh, was trying. Is that to... information you guys need? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Go ahead. Ask your question. Oh, hello. Hi, lady. Anika, did you know Orion Ono? I don't know that name. Orion sounds familiar, but I don't know Orion Ono. No. <laughs> Why is Orion familiar? It must have been something also a constellation. during Lazarus. I'm I sorry, don't what? know. I don't know. So That's doing, huh? uh, Lazarus. It was a place I was taken in the middle of the Badlands. My uh, friends came and rescued me from there. I think. Did they? I don't say that in character, but like, did they get it? Yeah. It seemed like these were great friends if this is how you turned out, but... It's not how she turned out. I don't oh, know what like happened. Out of character. <laughs> the last thing I remember... Crystal and... Icarus? They were... Icarus died first. Crystal second. I don't remember the details, just the order. And then I guess I died. And this is heaven? This isn't heaven. What is this? No. I ask him to plug the button again real quick. Like, I just hold up my hand I... to plug it and say, yeah, I think we should turn her off for now. He nods. He I starts... mean, should... Go ahead. Shouldn't we tell her? No. He starts smashing the deck at, uh, Bucket's insistence, unless somebody else tells him otherwise. No, we don't need to break the program. Program turns off, he pulls the shard out, the shard still blue for a bit, and then goes cold. And he'll set that down over the counter. Well, that's what you got. Were those uh, GPS coordinates on the file name out in the fucking Badlands? Boxville. Boxville, okay. Technically part of the Badlands but not really. I Most mean, people wouldn't refer to them as one and the same. Correct. 
Or they'd refer to it as junk town, the junkyard, uh, the dam side, or that specific aspect of it, Boxville, which is a combat zone. So it's a hot mess. Lots of people vying for power, nobody really in control. Small sections of it kind of turned into isolated forts that fight against each other. It's literally people found the coolest junk, they hide behind it and shoot at the other people with junk. (laughs) Oh my god. It's the American way. (laughs) Yes. It is one hundred percent. Very truly. That's how we so, want it. We have a, a ghost AI lady on the, on a chip. That's who's a who's point. who's picking that back up? Like who's carrying that with them? Well, Cam has the case. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't. Just I don't love back in the carrying yeah. case. I guess. Hey, I don't love that Cam is the one that has it. I gotta be real. <laughs> I don't, uh, I mean, otherwise I'll pick it up, and I don't no, think you no. want me picking it up. Hey, what's wrong with Kim? Because he feels I, bad I was, for the lady. I was feeling more <laughs> that like Gino, just from the interactions we've had so far, Gino seems more stable. Is what I'm saying with something like this. That you haven't we're... seen us in a firefight yet. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in one, and that's where we're heading next. It seems like I don't know. It could potentially the, uh, be that about that. I think we're gonna go have to go help uh, yeah. Cyber Psycho. So I uh, hope you're uh, ready to help. Uh, He's gonna or she's gonna go. Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay. I gave you what you needed. Now you're gonna give me what I need. Um, here's the information I got on the location. So we got about ten minutes left of the evening. Um, we're obviously setting up for next session. Right. Yeah. Um, she is going to state that in Watson, kind of near the industrial side, there is an individual. Um, his name is Barry. And Barry has holed himself up um, inside of the back area, the loading area of an industrial location um, just south of the uh, tube uh, storage and the nuclear um, power plants that power some of the city here. Um, it's not too far from Cormac's territory, Cormac being another fixture she mentions, but he has given the go-ahead. She can operate in his territory without problem. Um, this individual, Barry, um, he's, um, kind of a working Joe, um, so he doesn't have a lot of combat mods or anything crazy. Uh, however, um, he does have a, hold on. What is the name of it? Um, Militech. Oh, shit. Bear with me here. Militech um, Linear Frame. Oh. I would look over very quickly while you're looking that up. And uh, I would say this is non-lethal, right? That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, we don't want him dead. Uh, We definitely want him captured. Um, and um, he has a Militech linear frame prototype Um, it's gone haywire um, fried his systems he's attached to um, I believe it's a Militech uh, Minotaur uh, leg unit with a full um, oh god what's the name of the goddamn gun bear with me here the gun's the important part so he's in like an exoskeleton, essentially. It's an exosuit, yeah. Um, you walking around like that's, the... that's what's well, that's what made him crazy. Like the suit went haywire. The linear frame that allows him to link to it is what made him crazy. The suit's okay. fine. Um, okay, but the suit is all his firepower, essentially. Like what makes well, him dangerous. Well, the suit makes him strong, and the suit allows him to use the gun. And I'm going to find the gun. The gun. Uh, it, it is. It, we've seen the gun. I think we all know the gun, but I just want to make sure that you understand the gun. The is gun. The machine gun. No, it is the big ass laser gun. Oh god! Right. Oh, no. Right. Cool. Oh yeah. fuck my life! Yeah, we got this. What this is the fun. name of that gun? Militech big gun. <laughs> big gun military. Volkite blaster. Is it the uh, Centaur? So the Militech Centaur is the name of the... So he's in a Minotaur and he's shooting a Centaur? I am going to... No, Centaurs <laughs> are different. The centaurs are different. Uh, but it, if you played um, Cyberpunk, it's the same thing that Royce had when you 
uh, fight. Okay, him. that's what I thought. That's what I thought. It's got an auto shield, and um, <laughs> it, it's got a, a big ass laser gun. Oh my god, Metal Gear! Metal Gear! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, stop! Um, but replace the. Uh, I'll hold on. I'll 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 put out a handout here. Uh, add handout so I can share it. I'm also stalling. Um, I mean, there's no match for my CQC. <laughs> CQC. <laughs> and then it's that gif of uh, the big boss, like, or yeah. the boss breaking the arm. Oh. <laughs> Slash tracked. <laughs> I mean, I think we have one person in this group who's probably gonna end up punching the robot in the face. And... Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's not called yeah. the defender, is it, John? Uh, it is called an. Uh, this is called a centaur. Oh, okay. That's what you the... were saying. Yeah, it's got the Aegis II auto shield, and the gun is. Fuck. They got pump, 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 pump thing. Don't have the name of the gun. Thermal. It's a thermal. Yeah. It's a thermal cannon. Yeah. It doesn't Shoots fire. Like big boxes. It doesn't fire lasers. It fires like pulses of th a superheat. Great. Oh shit! More melta. Like, than... I like yeah, it's tangles, it's nice. that's it's more melta than last. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we could have with the guardsmen. We can't deal with the fucking space marine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Good times. Um, but yeah, so that's who you have to go after before nightfall. Um, obviously, there will be a time component, um, and there will be a lot of information I'm going uh -huh. to be relaying to you before next session that will deal with the environs that you'll be entering into that you'll be able to kind of scope out before the combat, if that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions regarding the specs of this thing, um, you can feel free to ask those in character in our um, side thread. Uh, Chase will have some of the details regarding the uh, Centaur specs and the Aegis II shield and uh, the like. Um, also weak points and um, other things regarding the, um, the Centaur. Um, and what you'll need to do to kind of stop him from being able to utilize it. Um, yeah, any questions, though, regarding that process? Nothing? No. Solid stopping point, I think. But, like, don't punch him in the head. Yeah, don't kill him. Punch his, punch his exosuit. Yeah, punch the exosuit. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I was about to ask, like, if we had a plan... Not having a net runner to like hack the suit <laughs> makes it so sketchy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It would a be plan so nobody's watched. Somebody that's not watched uh, Hogwatch. You think there's a plan for this? Oh, no, we just go and win, Allah. and then we get ratings. We've been doing it for years. <laughs> doing it for years. One year. <laughs> like, I'm happy to take the subdermal like out of him, but Cyber City. I am tangling with Metal Gear Ray. I was about right. to say, I look at I look at the dock and I'm like, I'm like that subdernal, that linear frame, real nice. But uh, I, I I like having my parts in where they're at, so that looks a little dangerous to get close to. For I sure. Yeah, what, what was the gun called again? Sorry. Oh, so it's a thermal cannon. Yeah, I don't. Oh. That's the name awful. cannon. Like <laughs> yeah. So a couple, a couple of notes just to be sure, like um, just just in case we're we're having hangouts. We don't want him dead. So I get that, but like, he is oh, a, I don't want him dead. So he gets to shoot at us. He and is a cyber psycho back. who's currently in paranoid mode. So he's not running around murdering people. He's hiding. He's very much like locked himself in his own little world. So there could be like methods Ooh. beyond just shooting him, punching him, and murdering him that could be employed. But if they go south, it's definitely going to go real bad. It's going to be shit hitting the fan, and that shit is going to be your shit being shot out of your ass about three <laughs> blocks that way. And the fan is like one of those industrial-style ones that's like, you know, like moving air through a factory. And it's going to shoot that shit everywhere. The point is it's going to be bad. <laughs> right, right, We've got to right. talk him off the ledge. we got to yeah. talk him off the ledge, my friend. All right, time for some therapy. <laughs> this different, is a different doctor. It's totally a possibility. It'll be fine. However you wish to engage him is entirely up to you as a crew. And we will be going over that. Like, if you have ideas and plans, as I start posting information about it for next week, 
you can certainly field that for the group and reply in character, and we can use that as our startup. So just keep that in mind. Are y'all gonna give me a weapon, or am I just like gonna? You, you are know, the weapon, hug. remember? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, if if you go like hug it out. If you start discussing your capability, you say I can't really use small guns. I can only use really big guns, and um, yeah. I think someone here has a very big gun that they might be able to let you borrow. Yeah, I want a bag. <laughs> what? I'm way up back. I, want... I mean, I mean the the little guns are just too small for my hand. He has a Militech H or Mark Thirty One HMG, so he can hand you that and you can utilize it. Um, it's a big Heck fucking yeah, machine gun, gun that uses heavy weapons as its com or attack skill. Um, okay, we'll end it there, and um, next week we will be dealing with the cyber psycho named Barry. Um, Barry. Barry, Barry. <laughs> Barry. Until we see you then. Barry. Have a good night. Barry.